Welcome to Fire Breathing Kittens, a standalone Dungeons and Dragons podcast. Every episode, Microplot is a standalone adventure that fits into the overarching macro plot of the whole season. Because they stand sturdily on their own, you can listen to these episodes in any order and can skip any you don't enjoy. Today is a special episode because it is an experiment in storytelling. It is a companion episode to the I I won't reveal the name because that's kind of a spoiler to the episode that is also airing, episode 156. This is episode 157. The non-player characters and the setting when they arrive on the scene will be the same, but the choices the players make will determine the outcome. We are joined today by Cosmos. Hello, everyone. My name is Cosmos. I am a a level five monk. I am standing in at five foot ten, weighing in at 180 pounds, with my face covered by a mask. I am the celestial body. I am, once again, for your ears and mine, Cosmos. Sinclair. Hello, I'm Sinclair, a fifth level warlock of Heros the Ferryman. I'm a half elf of average height with a slight build. My face is clean shaven, my left eye is hazel, while my right is blue and I wear my hair in an undercut that is black with cobalt highlights. My dear companions Malachi and Matty are always close at hand, a raven and a well-dressed imp, respectively. And you will find my taste in apparel to be absolutely splendid. And Stella! Hi everyone, I'm Stella. I am a half-elf, half-dragon sorcerer, level 5, and um, I stand about like over six feet tall because I'm around six feet tall, but when I'm wearing heels, I'm over six feet tall. So around like six three, I would say today. Um, I always wear a cloak and sunglasses when I'm outside, uh, just because you know too much sun is not good for the skin. I have long white hair, um, two sets of horns, one pair of small horns and one pair of large horns that are silver, a silver tail, and I have very very pale skin and blue eyes. And today I'm wearing a very, like, sort of grungy, sort of fancy outfit with black lace that matches my cloak. So, yeah, that's me. Excellent. You three adventurers are walking on a road, heading from the train station and going towards the town of Mishwi. You had set out from Nikimui right after accepting the flyer from the jobs board that one of you possesses, but because it's still winter, the sun sets early and it's already dark. The tamped earth is lit by moonlight, patches of ice gleaming. What were you all talking about just now? Well, I was complimenting Stella on her absolutely amazing outfit today. This is my first time actually going out with someone so well dressed. I don't feel like the odd one out now. Oh, thank you. I mean, I guess same here, though I meet a lot of well-dressed people um, a lot of the time. But yeah, I mean, I like your outfit too, Sinclair. Uh, thank you. You're really rocking that um, that new style. Like, I've seen you around the guild hall a few times before, but yeah, today you just look fancier than usual. Well, I'm, I'm feeling myself more than usual today. Recent change. Meanwhile, Cosmos is probably wearing, like, a tracksuit um, <laughs> and uh, the mask on, which he has never seen without. Um, what does your mask look like? It's, like, b- sort of black and glittery. I almost imagine it being, like, uh, Hubble Space Telescope uh, pictures, uh, like those 4K really nice pictures of space. It's kind of that design all around the full face mask. Oh, that is fascinating. Yeah, I really like your mask. Um, did did you make it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I make all the clothes that I wear. Even the tracksuit? Even the tracksuit, yeah. It took me, like, 13 hours to put together, but this tracksuit is entirely by my design. If you need me to make you anything, I can surely put something together. Give me your sending stone number. I am going to have plenty of work for you in the future. I am positive. And that is what we continue talking about. Excellent. Do you have a light source? I have dark vision. I have vision. dark vision. Oh, let me make sure that I have dark vision too. Uh, yes, I have dark vision as well. Okay. No light source noted. Everyone, what are your passive perceptions? Fourteen. That would be a uh, nine. Cosmos has got a twelve. Okay, the minimum was fourteen, so that means that Stella... This is just for you. Okay. 
far, far off in the direction that you're walking towards, you hear feet pounding on the tamped earth. This is in the direction that we're going? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um, what time of day is it, out of curiosity? Because it's winter, the sun has set, and it's already dark. Okay, it's dark out. And where are we heading again? Sorry, I missed that part. The town of Mishwi. Mishwi, okay. How far have we, well, how long have we been traveling, and how much further is it? I feel like if I say those exact specifics at some point in time, I will contradict myself. So I will say it was just a quick train ride from Nikamui, and it's just a quick walk to the town. Okay. Good enough for me. Short duration. (laughs) (laughs) Surely couldn't be that much further. Yeah. Well, um, with this information, Stella's just going to, like, um, go quiet for a second and said, Wait, did you guys, did you guys hear that? Uh, five, 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 uh, what? Uh, there's, like, feet coming from the direction that we're going in. Uh, like, footsteps, rather. Not just feet. But did you guys hear that, too? Both of you Mm. can now make a perception check. Okay. First roll of my time in the fire-breathing kittens. That is a 16. Well, we're matching. 16 as well. Now that she's alerted you, all three of you hear... It's a scream, and it's getting louder, and someone's running towards you, terrified. Running in terror towards you on the dark earthen path is a lean human man in his 30s with unkempt white hair and a scared blue dragonborn woman wearing a leather vest and knee-length shorts. Okay. Stella, you see that her, and only Stella, see that her shimmery blue scaled knees have dirt on them notice a shovel in her hands, and hear the contents of her backpack jingling metallically as she runs. But only Stella notices that because she was the highest on innate perception. But to everyone, the two fleeing figures are 30 feet further on the path in the direction you were walking towards. From beyond them, a low groaning sound drifts to your ears. Everyone, roll initiative. Oh. Hey. Oh boy. Heading straight to danger nat- today, I see. Yeah, I rolled a nat 20 for a total of 22. Ooh. <laughs> I got an 18. Dirty 20. I thought I would be the first to run into danger, but apparently I will be the last. <laughs> <laughs> the sorcerer is the first one running to danger. This is... <laughs> <laughs> go on, Stella, you got this. Show them what for. I I'm sure nothing will today. go wrong. <laughs> Stella, you're up first. What do you I do? I am up first. Uh, I mean, do, do I do I like see what's chasing them at you all? You hear, because the way that distance and dark vision works, you cannot see, but you can hear. Uh. Okay, that's okay. Um, I am going to like whip out my my wand and like kind of have it at the ready. Um, I'm just going to ready a. Uh, ray of frost for whenever I can see something like that's going to be a writing action I'm going to hold it until it comes into my view and then I'm going to shout at the people running like just like are you guys okay come on um you're safe behind us (laughs) and I'm just gonna like try to reassure them I guess like try to say like yeah you guys can just yeah are you guys okay kind of yeah that's what I'm doing in a slimy kind of untrustworthy voice Let's see if I can voice act that. Probably not. He sounds sinister. The lean but muscular human male with white unkempt hair, pale skin, and amber eyes says, Do we look like we're okay? (laughs) Can I scoff at you? Like, duh. And and he is 30 feet away from you. And uh, the female blue dragonborn goes in a gravelly voice, Zombies! All right, well... I'm just going to hold my action. (laughs) All right. Sinclair, you're up next. You're 30 feet away. Well, Sinclair is getting uh, some museum flashbacks. Uh, Do I see the shovel at all? You did not. Okay. All right. Well, get over here, you two. Get behind us. We'll stop them. And uh, I'll prepare an eldritch blast for whatever undead thing peeks its head over the road. Noted. Is that the end of your turn? Uh, yes. 
Cosmos, you're up. Yes, my time. I get to charge into danger. So I am going to run past these two. I have 40 feet of movement as a monk. Um, hearing zombies, I'm going to charge my full 40 feet uh, past them. Do I see anything from here? Is there any zombies within range? How far out does your dark vision extend? Uh, dark vision, I believe, is 60 feet as a celestial. Math. Yes. Exactly at the edge of your vision, you see five shambling forms. Perfect. So at the edge of my vision, so they're about 60 feet away from me? They are exactly 60 feet away from you. Exactly 60 feet away from me. That case, I will make sure that my... I'm going to give away exactly what kind of subclass of monk I am as well uh, in this moment, because I can send out... Nope, I can't. Actually, I'm going to hold a searing... What is it? A radiant sunbolt. My hands light up with pure fighting spirit, and I am going to wait for these creatures to get within 30 feet of me. Noted. Is that the end of your turn? That is the end of my turn, yes. Okay. The human man with white unkempt hair and the blue dragonborn are going to run. They run 30 feet. I think they can only run... Let me check their speeds. Yeah, I think they can run 30. Yes, they can. They run 30 feet, so they are, they are now at the place that Stella and Sinclair are, which is 40 feet from Cosmos. If you guys do not stop their movement, they are going to downgrade their action to a movement and continue to move 30 feet. Do either of you in any way impede their movement? Nah. I let them run past me because it's just like, yeah, they should just keep on running if they're zombies. <laughs> uh, excuse me, you two. Aren't you going to help stop this problem you've unearthed? Har har, good pun. Um, <laughs> make a persuasion check. I'm not very persuasive at the moment. That's only a nine. The man with the white unkempt hair, who's in his 30s, says, Oh yeah, I'll totally help. But then proceeds to run 30 feet. <laughs> Bring the guards! Absolutely. I will do that. Make an insight check. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> He will do that. You believe him. He is running towards the train station. He will bring the Mishwi town guards that he's running away from. <laughs> I knew we passed a guards barracks on the way here. I just knew it. And just to let you guys know, uh, these NPCs may exit the story if they are allowed to continue to run. That is the end of their turn. And now, shambling towards you, moving stiltedly on decaying limbs, the undead approach Cosmos. They are 40 feet away from you, Cosmos. And, 40 um, feet, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were 60. And then mm -hmm. if you, I don't know when your reaction thing goes off. Uh, if they get within 30 feet of me, that's when I'm able to throw my sunbolt. Got it. So then downgrading their action to a movement, they become 20 feet away from you. And it is at that point during that movement that you... Going to miss, probably. Um, maybe not. So a six plus six, that's a 12. That hits. There are five targets. Which one do you go for? Oh, whichever's the nearest one. All right. Sounds good. Um, everyone, please pre-roll your to hit and damage so that when we get to you, you have those numbers. Yep. That is going to be... Uh, four points of radiant damage, and I believe I get an extra attack because we are now fifth level. So that is going to be a 13 plus 6, that's a 19 to hit, and mm -hmm. a uh, 8 points of radiant damage as one hand after the other. I just send two radiant sunbolts flying out into the pack of zombies. This zombie is... A 70 or so year old, very frail looking body. I mean, he's a zombie, but like when he was alive, he was a old man. And that damage makes him look like he is like, wow, very, very damaged by that. Because 
Um, I'm just going to share with you guys, Radiant Damage, Zombies, very effective. If you feel like that was an excellent hit. Is that the end of your turn? Or your reaction? Are your, Is that the end of your reaction? Yeah, that's my reaction. That's my two attacks. Got it. Stella, it's your turn. You are currently 40 feet from Cosmos and 20 feet further from Cosmos. So 60 feet total from you are five shambling forms that you can now see at the edge of your dark vision. Oh, okay. So would my reaction go off still? Um, uh, or like, is it you? just beginning my you, turn? What did you prepare? I prepared a ray of frost um, yeah. for whenever they entered my vision. Yep. Um, yep. Within Which is 60 feet away, because 60 feet is the range of my thing. So yeah. is, is that going to be my reaction or my action for this turn? Reaction first, and then your action. Okay, great. Um, I am... Okay. So <laughs> that is a total of 11 to hit for the Ray of Frost for my reaction. That hits. Okay, um, great. And that's 13 points of damage. Um, oh frost my. damage. Goodness. And the, uh, the speed of that zombie is reduced by 10. That speed of that zombie is reduced by quite a lot because that is exactly how many hit points that zombie had left. And I'm going to roll a dice here with a DC of 5 plus 13. That's not likely to happen. Nope. That's not an 18. And that zombie stays down. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, okay. And then for my... Oh, wonderful. And for my turn, question. How close together are the zombies? Within 10 feet of one another. 10 feet of one. Okay. Oh, great. So um, that's wonderful because I have an AoE uh, spell effect for them. Um, I'm going to use my action to uh, to run about like... I'm going to use my action to dash. So I'm going to get around like... I'm going to run, say, 50 feet. Yeah, 50 feet. Not exactly 60 because I don't want to be right in front of them. And then I'm going to cast Binding Ice which is a second level spell. Oh yeah, I'm also going to quicken spell that one to make it my bonus action. So I'm using one sorcery point to uh, quicken spell Binding Ice. So that's minus one sorcery point and minus one second level spell slot. And this spell is interesting because first of all, it's going to do 3d8 damage, which is sad. Only 12 points of damage. Um, and... Oh, actually, wait. It has to make a cre- it has to make a Constitution saving throw each creature in the thirty foot cone. It's a thirty foot cone. Okay. So we're getting Constitution saving throws of thirteen, sixteen, four, and fourteen. One of those succeeds. The rest of them fail. Like the sixteen uh, succeeds because my DC is fifteen. So th- um, that one would take six points of frost damage, and it's not hindered by ice. And um, the rest of them take 12 points of damage, and they are hindered by ice formations for one minute, or until it takes an action to break away the ice. So when it's hindered, it has a speed reduced to zero. So those ones that are bound, the ones that failed, cannot move unless they use an action to free themselves from the ice. The one that succeeded can still move. And since I didn't read the spell description beforehand, I didn't move 50 feet, I only moved uh, 40 feet. So I'm 20 feet away from them. Noted. And then you see something odd. Because they had seen ice damage before, uh, they're not very quick on the uptake, but they are able to... um, It's called paresthesia, Hmm. which is the word for when your leg goes numb. They just are unfeeling. And they can reduce the damage they take from a a single source by 1d12 points. So I'm going to roll a d12 for all of them. They could just have done zero damage. Well, they're pinned now. Yeah. (laughs) And they reduce it by eight. So the damage that they took was actually, what's the number? Uh, Twelve was the original number. Okay, so new number is noted. Okay. Yeah, and three of them, you said, are frozen to the ground until they take an action to do something about that. Yep. Okay. Is that the end of your turn? That is the end of my turn. I dashed and I quickened spell for a bonus action spell. That is the end of my turn. Sinclair, you are 60 feet away from these zombies and 40 feet away from your two friends. What do you do? Well, uh, 60 feet away, I would have been able to see them and take my reaction with the Eldritch Blast. Um, would you be all right with me taking that? Or... Yeah. All right. So the first attack roll was... You guys have to let me know a... when you have reactions, by the way. I got a lot to keep track of. <laughs> like... Oh, totally understandable. <laughs> yep. So the first roll is an 11. That Did hits. It? Which one 10 do you damage. Hit? Number two, three, uh, four, five. 
the most well-dressed one. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'd say two of them are wearing suits, and the other two are wearing dresses, because they're in funeral garb. How dare someone wear a dress that is trying to compete with Stella's? The audacity. <laughs> I will avenge this offense. Uh, ten damage to that one. And then the next hit roll is a 26 with and this eight is damage. Magical Force. typed. Force damage. Force damage. Got it. This is an interesting thing because the other episode, no one had any magical attacks. And I was like, yeah, it's actually half because it was bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing from a non magical weapon. But for you guys, you're just taking these zombies out. All right. So 11 from the first one and. 10 damage from the first attack and 8 damage from the second. Got it. 10 damage from the first attack and 8 damage from the second. All right. Well, this is going to be much faster. Noted. Uh, you would say that it looks like this magical attack that you guys are all doing, these magical... The effects of your spells are really effective, you'd say. The, the undead flesh is just flying off in big meat globs. <laughs> it's really splattering everywhere. And everybody roll a perception check because it's... <laughs> Lovely. It's a spray. Thank goodness I'm 20, mi 20 feet away from them. Okay, um, that'll be a 13. 18. That's a 13 from me. Sinclair, only you notice that the spray is glittery. There's a golden sparkle to the spray of meat globs. Oh boy. Uh, Stella's player knows exactly what that is. <laughs> Probably Stella would too if she saw it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and so Sinclair, that was your reaction. Do you want to take your turn? That was my reaction, yes. Uh, first, I'm going to tell Matty, fly to town, get help. And then I am going to go the opposite direction that Stella did. So trying to maneuver to surround them and let loose with two more Eldritch Blast. Uh, the you first one... You're 60 feet away from them, so you can... It's a road. Are you going off into the woods on either side? In which case you have half movement? Yes, or... that, that sounds fine, as long as I can still okay. draw a bead on the uh, undead. Okay, all right. So if you do go off into the woods and it's half movement, um, you're still going to relatively from them be about 40 feet away, even if you expend your full movement because of triangles. Just the geometry know. checks out. Okay, noted. And you're now in the woods. Uh, I will say that they have plus five to their AC because of the tree cover. All right. Well, the first attack roll was a 16. That hits. All right. And that's going to the same one with the dress. Uh, that is seven damage. <laughs> Noted. And the second one, I think, missed. Yeah, their AC for you is 15 because of the trees. An Eldritch Blast kaplows into a tree trunk and explodes bark everywhere. All right. Well, I, I believe that's my turn. Excellent. After Sinclair, we're back to Cosmos. Cosmos, you are 20 feet away from the zombies. Oh boy, and Cosmos didn't see nothing, so he's going to charge right in uh, and go for the... Uh, which zombie wasn't pinned down by Stella's uh, attacks earlier? The completely unharmed one. He was looking just very, very plump still. Not, not at all bones. Perfect. I'm going to crack my knuckles, and I'm going to lay in with unarmed attacks. The first one is going to be a, a 12 to hit. Are your attacks magical? I don't believe they are yet. Noted. Okay. 12 hits. All right. 12 hits. That's going to be seven points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. That is going to be a, a 22 to hit. And also hits. Uh, five points of bludgeoning damage. Okay, you say that having compared the radiant damage versus the effect on the zombie of what you just did with your fists, mm -hmm. it looks like your fists are landing, but the zombie isn't feeling pain and isn't reacting very much when chunks of it fly off. So, for example, if you punched mm -hmm. it in the cheek and it's chin bone is exposed it doesn't even like flinch and it keeps coming for you and it's like trying to bite you with a broken jaw huh so yeah well isn't that neat i'm going to still use my last attack uh with a bonus action to punch uh just gonna put a little bit more oomph behind it then uh this is going to be a 12 to hit and 
nine points of bludgeoning damage. Noted. Is that the end of your turn? That will be my turn, yes. Okay. We have a certain running sound is coming from behind you all as as they are definitely going to get the guards. They are now approaching 100 feet away from you guys. Actually, with the distance that you've added, they're over 100 feet away. They're, they're, they're booking it. And everyone now is here, the jingle jingle from her backpack. And the shovel, you know, clanging onto the backpack. And then it's the zombie's turn. Three of them are going to expend their action to break free from the ice. The fourth one is going to... Let's see if it bites Cosmos. Oh, that's probably a hit. Does a 17 hit you, Cosmos? A 17 is going to hit, yeah. Yeah. It bites, it sinks its gross, stinky teeth into you. And you take six necrotic damage, and it recovers. It, It chews and swallows and takes a chunk out of you. And please note that you have been bitten by a zombie um, on your character sheet somewhere. I will put that down in my notes, definitely, in big, bold letters. Bitten. Yep. Bitten by zombie. Yeah, outside of Mishwi. That happened. Okay. And they are now all unfrozen. Let's see if they can live long enough to do something about that. Stella, we're back to you. You are 20 feet from the zombies. What do you do? Uh, is there a way I can pull off another one of those attacks without hitting Cosmos? Unfortunately, because they're standing in, Cosmos is standing in between zombies, and you'd, mm. you'd be able to hit some of the zombies, like three of the zombies, but not all four without hitting Cosmos. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, three is good enough for me, so I'm going to do another one of the binding ice, so then you see, like, I'm going to stay exactly where I am. <laughs> I'm just going to like um like point my wand forward and like these like gigantic beautiful ice crystals just like spring in the 30 foot cone and just like trap the zombies or attempt to trap them so now I'm going to they need to make con saves those three zombies that I'm trying to trap they rolled a 10 a 12 and a non-natural 20 okay the non-natural 20 is the only one that Uh, succeeds on the save so it takes eight points of cold damage and is not hindered so its speed is not zero but the rest of them take oh wait sorry seven points of damage because i read the dice wrong um the rest take 14 points of damage and they are hindered so two of them are hindered and they took 14 points of damage one of the zombies becomes like frostbitten meat that's been in your freezer for too long and i'm gonna roll a quick that was uh yeah oh wait nope but then it, it, it its eyes open again. It's fine. Okay. I'm also going to um, quicken spell another... Let's just do another Ray of Frost. Um, so that's another sorcery point. And I'm going to roll to hit. That's going to be a... Ooh, 15 plus 7. 22 to hit. And Which that's going to be... We've got one that took a chunk out of Cosmos. We've got one that's frozen and one that's frozen that looks like it died and came back question mark and then we've got one unfrozen one that's looking pretty pretty poor which one the one that just attacked hmm the the one that's unfrozen the one that's unfrozen is going to be the one that i hit got it and it takes ooh 12 points of cold damage and its speed is reduced by 10 okay what was your to hit my two hit, to hit was 22 and it took oh gosh yeah 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 <laughs> okay that one at uh, how much damage was that that I'm rolling against now? Uh, 12. 12. Okay, so it's got to get a 7. Nope. Okay. 5 plus 7. That one. Uh, describe what it looks like as that zombie goes down for the last time. So um, for this one, is just like a, a kind of like a white ray that as soon as it hits the zombie, it just creates like this crystal formation. So like just like it's one crystal formation that just like um, spikes it straight through its chest. Excellent. Oh. And the zombie rises no more. Is that the end of your turn? That is the end of the tur- my turn. I'm going to move 10 feet back. Noted. You are 10 feet back. You are now 30 feet from the zombie. Yes, I'm a range attacker. <laughs> yeah. So I guess they could try to get to me if they dash or something, or if their speed's 30. <laughs> it is not. They are slow shambling zombies. Yes. Sinclair, I have that you are 40 feet away from them. And that they have plus five to their AC against you. 
as you are in the trees, and there are trees between you and your eldritch blasts and them, what do you do? There are well, there's one very healthy zombie that took a bite out of Cosmos, one frozen zombie that's looking eh, kind of worse for wear, and one frozen zombie that you swear died. That's what, but it's not dead. Well, I'm realizing that these zombies aren't going to be shooting any arrows or slings or crossbow bolts at me, so trying to take cover, probably not necessary. I'm just going to, you know, ah, d- dang shrubs. <clears throat> sorry, sorry, everyone. My <laughs> tunic got caught. <laughs> All right. Wait. Ex- excuse me, Stella, didn't you kill that one? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. But, <laughs> um, yeah, th- there is one that was dead. It has an ice bag through its chest. I, I could have sworn you killed another one. It- it's moving still. Uh, yeah, that one's, like, trapped in ice right now. So I, I guess if you if you aim your, like, uh, your blast thingies, like, try to hit it and not the ice. Yeah, there's lots of ice in the way. Sorry about that. That's just how my magic works. All right, Wait a second, is that one chewing on Cosmo? Ah! <laughs> get away from my tailor! <laughs> yeah, get away from him! Leave his mask alone, it's awesome! So, uh, the first attack is a 12, and the second is a 13. Excellent, those hit. What are you five. hitting with? Oh, Eldritch Blast. Okay. Uh, 5 and 10, respectively, on the damage dice. And you're hitting the one that was reanimated? Or the one that's frozen looks kind of okay, or the one that's at full health? Oh, the one that's enjoying a, a filet mignon cosmo. Excellent. And how much damage total is that? Fifteen. My goodness. Okay, now none of the zombies are looking particularly well off. They, like, for example, have an eyeball popping out. A joint is hanging from a, a scrap of flesh. They're not holding together very well, but they're still moving. <laughs> is that the end of your turn, Sinclair? Uh, yes. I'm, I'm going to encourage Matty to... Get help post-haste. All right. And Cosmos, we are to you. It is your turn. You are currently standing amongst zombies. I certainly am. I'm going to spend one of my key points, and I'm going to uh, step of the wind, use my bonus action to disengage, uh, back up, and uh, adaptation is clearly the best course of action i'm going to go back to using my sunbolts and i'm going to make an attack against the one that bit me that is going to be a ooh, a natural 19 plus 6 so 25 to hit uh hit. six points of radiant damage oh almost enough then one more to take i can only assume after surviving so many hips that this is the biggest one right Sure, it was a half-orc, and yeah. he looks like he was a farmer or something. Very muscular. Cosmos always goes after the biggest target, so that is going to be a 16 to hit and 7 points of radiant damage. Ooh. Undead Fortitude says that if the damage that hits it is radiant, it does not get a chance to stay alive. So I don't even have to roll for that one. It's Woo-hoo. very completely dead this time. Nice. Is that the end of your turn? That will be the end of my turn, yes. Okay. Felionis and Slickdraw run even further away from the story. And now the zombies. They are both frozen, so they use their action to be unfrozen. Stella, we're back to you. Wait, is that Slickdraw? Would would I have recognized that person? Did I disguise myself as Slickdraw? (laughs) You did. They didn't recognize you. That's amazing. (laughs) But I guess I was just too preoccupied by zombies to really notice. <laughs> so um, all the zombies are now unfrozen, right? Yep. Okay. Well, I'm running. I'm starting to run out of second level spell slots, and I want to keep one there just in case. So no more uh, my Hero Academia style uh, <laughs> ice structures. Because <laughs> yeah, if any of you have seen that show, it's like one of the characters likes to do big ice structures. That's kind of like the idea. Um, instead, I am just going to, um, you know what? I have another ice spell that I could use. It's a first level spell, and I have lots of first level slots available, and it's called Ice Knife. <laughs> so, um, I'm gonna do, yeah, I'm gonna create a shard of ice and fling it at a creature within range. So, is there, like, a cluster of zombies that are, like, around five feet from each other, or, like... There are two zombies left, and they're on either side of Cosmos. Oh, either side of Cosmos. Okay, yeah. 
then I'm going to just... Is one of them still... Is one of them the one that was wearing a dress? Yeah. Okay, they yeah. Have I have one hit point left. <laughs> okay, I'm going to aim it at... Oh, it only has one hit point left. You can oh, swear I'm you killed her already. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it at that one because, first of all, stay down. And second of all, I, I want to study that dress to see, like, how the, like, the ice, um, like did with the with the rips and all that kind of stuff like i'm really interested in his design and that'll be a 19 to hit with the um ice spike that hits okay perfect so it's gonna take a lot of damage because it's gonna take first 1d10 which is eight points of damage and then next are 2d6 <laughs> so it takes total of uh 14 points of um cold damage <laughs> You could swear you killed it. You really could. But then it just opens her she opens her eyes again and she's, you know, she's wearing a really nice dress and it's infuriating. And I'm just like, seriously? And um I mean, that was my action and I'm just going to uh, use my bonus action to like ha have my cloak billow out uh impressively because I I am mad, so I'm just like, come on already. Just die. I want that dress. <laughs> Right. And that that's pretty much my turn. I'm going to move... I'll, I'll just move 10 feet closer, just because I'm just like, come on. But I'm not going to yeah. move too close, because, you know, dead things, gross. Yeah, and they can move now. Sinclair, we're to you. There is one zombie... Nope, there's still two. Just kidding. <laughs> Dad, gum it. Why will you not stay down? <sighs> I guess it just really wants to keep that dress, but I want the dress. <laughs> Say yes to the dress. Say no to staying alive. A 12 and a 9. The 9 misses. The 12 came to be 6 damage. Okay, you hitting the lady with the dress or the other zombie? Lady with the dress. Okay, let's see if she stays down. It's She's personal at this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and she stays down this time. Scratch her off the list. Do you say any quippy remarks? Oh, I was so blinded by rage, I, I completely forgot my witty, actiony hero banter at home. But right. now, now we say, have a nice finally, dress. It took you long enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I say to the zombie, not to Sinclair. <laughs> Though it could also be directed at Sinclair, too. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying, all right? <laughs> One zombie left, you say? Cosmos, there's one zombie left. All right, Cosmos is going to crack his knuckles and prepare two more radiant sun bolts right for this zombie. And describe what happens as you kill it. Oh, okay. Um, it is... I imagine they just look like straight-up Street Fighter Hadoukens that Cosmos is throwing out. I can't imagine them in any other way. So it's just this large charged power up and then it fires out, strikes the zombie in the chest and it explodes in a wonderful confetti of glitter and gore. <laughs> yes, yes it does. Da 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 da. The battle is over and you have exited initiative. Whew. Great. Okay. Good work um, team. Yeah. Jeez. Like, is it just um, me, or is this a weird thing to have zombies just running around on roads? Like, I go on a lot of roads, never seen that before. This is certainly me. not the kind of thing I've come across in my general travels, at least I don't recall. Oh, uh, Cosmo, how are you doing? Uh, what was taken? Like, a, a bit of bicep? A, a bit of shoulder? Yeah, it looks like... Uh, this doesn't look too bad, does it? I'm just going to point to the necrotic wound in my arm. Hmm. Uh, here, you, you can have one of these. Um, and I'm going to, like, uh, I, I'm still, like, keeping my distance, like, ten feet away, because, like, dead stuff, gross. Um, I, I'm going to, like, offer a potion of healing to Cosmos. Okay. I will go ahead and take that potion of healing. With my mage hand. So you just see, like, this floating spectral hand, like, this ghost hand, basically, just hand you it. <laughs> Very, very neat. You've all got some impressive skills on you. I mean, and I'm not shooting the sun out of my fist. Um, oh, should I roll or, or should Cosmos roll for that? Don't care. You guys I'll pick. just roll. I think Go it's 2d4 plus 2. 
Um, so that's six plus two, eight points. I'm back. Nice. Back to full. Uh, question. Would I have noticed the dust by now? There's enough blood spread everywhere that it's glittering. Yeah, definitely. I'm just gonna, like, look at it like, oh my god. Oh, th there's there's glitter here. That is... that That's not good. I, I don't like glitter. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry. Should I, like, switch to a different mask, or...? Oh no, like, the glitter on your mask is, is fine, it's just this glitter that's everywhere is just- I I have had bad experiences with glitter in the past. Uh, I, I fell in some, and apparently it's gonna make me undead when I die, so... Yeah, I, I'm gonna stay away from it. And I, I would- Wait. So, this isn't like, uh, the candy that you stick the bad-tasting stick in and then it's delicious when you lick it? I should not be collecting this. Uh, yeah, probably not. And unless you want to, um, your body to have a second life when you die. Unless you want to come back as, like, unless you want to just be in mindless undead. And I it's definitely... It's something that I learned from, from school. Like, it's one of the few things I learned from school. Shouldn't be standing right in the middle of all of these corpses, now shouldn't I? Yeah, probably not. Uh, well, hmm. This is an interesting scenario to find myself in. Yeah, if, if you get out of the, um... If you get out of this, the middle of all the zombies, I can, like, clean you with magic. Oh, yeah, that would be, that would be excellent. I would be very appreciative if you can. Can you also get the blood and the guts off of the tracksuit oh, yeah, as yeah. well? Great, perfect. I'm and, going to step yeah. over. Once Cosmos does that, I'll use prestigitation to um, clean him up. <laughs> and I'm going to look at Sinclair and, like, Sinclair, did you get any on you? Or did, is it just Cosmos? Well, I, I never got closer than 30 feet, give or take. Um, but now I'm very... Don't step on the glitter and break your mother's back. Very large, wide steps, hopping unnecessarily, like... Yeah, stay five feet away at all times. Like, what, what, what if we just went through the woods and just avoided the road? And by extension, yeah. zombification glitter. Maybe that's a good idea. And, like, th that dress is nice. I would have liked to study it to see how, like, it ripped whenever that person died, all that kind of stuff. But you know what? It's, it's not worth it. I'm not going to subject my family to to that. So, yeah, maybe we should just go in the woods. Though, usually, like, weird things happen in the woods when it's dark. Like, there's weird people around you, weird monsters. But, hey, what would you guys prefer? Weird monsters or, um, zombification dust? Monsters, Cosmos please. is going to nervously laugh as he ponders, uh, life after death. All right. Shall we carry on? I I guess so. Um Or do wait, we want to Where are we going to this to, to this town anyways? Um and I guess I'm going to like who has the flyer from the from the job board? <laughs> That's up to you guys. Who would have it? Oh, I'm not the responsible one. Shall we say it's me because that's the funniest? And now there's yes. <laughs> zombie dust glitter all over the uh the flyer as well. As I pull it from my stained pocket. Mm -hmm. No, well, no keep not, that away so from me. <laughs> no, not, not so stained, because yes. I, I cleaned you. Yes. Yeah, magic. <laughs> Just slightly uh, frayed at the edges. Do you read the job flyer? Yeah, I'm going to pull that out, and I'm going to uh, try and hold it up so that everybody can read it, but I'll go ahead and look at it as well. Okay. It says, Hello, fire-breathing kittens. It has been a while. Barry Rawlings here. I hope you all are doing well. A monist, how's that ring of invisibility I made you holding up? Well, enough small talk. As you know, I'm an artificer who makes magical items using the monster parts I find on my hikes. Sometimes I'm lucky enough to get to work with strange oddities that adventurers such as yourselves bring me. Last week, a man came to me saying his son had gone missing from the Hokkaido Mountain Zoo. He brought with him some strange magical dust that he collected. I started doing research on the dust, and it's very strange. I could use some help. Please come see me in my workshop in Mishui. Second left turn in town, then three blocks down. It's the green and purple painted cottage. If you reach the waterfall, you've gone too far. Signed, Barry Rawlings. So it definitely feels like I'm going to be used as a science experiment. Yeah, probably both of us, since I also got that dust on me a while ago. Um, and actually, like, racking my mind, I'm not sure if it's just a one... Like, if you're exposed to it once, then that's it. 
or if it's like the more exposed to it, the worse it's going to get. I'm going to just try to think if which is the case. And could I make like an arcana or history check or something like that to try to see if it's like a one time thing or if it's like a multiple times equals greater risk thingy? Sure. Okay. And I guess I don't know because I rolled a four and arcana history, both the same modifier of zero. So that's a four for me. (laughs) Yep. You haven't died yet. It's hard to say. (laughs) Yeah. I I don't know if it's just a one time thing or if it's multiple time thing, but yeah, I guess we can both be used as experiments. Well, I just know that it's very important for every experiment to have a control. So it is imperative that we keep any dust off of me. Right. So shall you walk on that side of the road? We'll rock on this side of the road and then carry on and find our way from there. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know what? You, you can you can have my cloak for now um, until the sun comes up. I'll, I'm going to need it then because my skin does not deal well with sun. Uh, but yeah, until then, you can have it and maybe it can protect you some more. And I'm just going to like shake it off and press it and then give it to offer it to Sinclair. Uh, I will use my uh, warlock invocation that lets me detect magic at will on the cloak, just to make sure that it doesn't have any zombie dust on it. It's not that I don't trust you, it's just that I want to make sure it's clean. Mm Mm-hmm. The glittery stuff was in the blood. The blood was pressed to digitate it off. Yep. And you also detect that it's a cloak of billowing, so it is a magical object. So you detect some magic coming from within the thing. Well, I put it on. Oh, 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 this is amazing. And if you, like, snap your fingers, like, really sassily, you can make it billow. (laughs) Oh, my gods. You have to take me to wherever you got this. Yeah, I I will. (laughs) As long as I don't get turned into a zombie, of course. Oh, can I keep it then? Not that I want that to happen. I just... (laughs) Um... As I said, uh, I'll need it back when the sun comes up, but after that, sure. Wonderful. Okay, well, only if you become a zombie. I, I don't want to steal your cloak. Oh, yeah. If I if I become a zombie, you can have, uh, you can have anything that's mine, I guess. Even though my, my brother's probably just gonna... Uh, I don't know if my brother will be okay with it. <laughs> he's He might... Mm, he's very protective. We'll cross that bridge should the unfortunate happen. Yeah, I hope it doesn't. I, I like being able to know what my body does. Onwards, then? Yeah, I guess. Onward we yes, go. Yes, let's go. You guys follow the path into Mishwi, right? Or, like, walk in the woods a little bit? Or what are you doing? Following the path? I'm going to go off the, the path a bit. I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go straight on the road. Okay. But it's within sight of the path, or...? I imagine... I'm imagining yeah. doing what you do as a kid, where you're walking on the, the curb, the very edge of the road and the sidewalk... Okay. You know, just maintaining your balance. Yeah, you successfully make it into Mishwi. This is a pretty small town. There are only a few blocks of buildings, with most of them stretching out along the main street you came in on. You have reached the first T intersection, which has a pharmacy, a post office, a refueling station, and a school. It was left of the T, right? Let me pull out the thing again and just make sure I get the directions right. You read... Second left turn in town, then three blocks down. It's the green and purple painted cottage. If you reach the waterfall, you've gone too far. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to look for a green and purple painted cottage, because that seems pretty distinctive. Though I don't know if I can actually see color, since it's dark out. At this first (laughs) T intersection, you see a pharmacy, a post office, a refueling station, and a school. And are we... I I think we need to go one more block up. Yeah, I was going to say, are we at the, like... Is it a T intersection where we can go straight? Yes. Okay, gotcha. Yep. Yeah. So, straight at this one. Got it. You have reached the second T intersection, which has a factory, a market, a park with a playground, and a town hall. Left here? Sure. I believe so. How far down do you go? I should be writing this down. The player is terrible with directions. Uh, yeah. The <laughs> character is not much better. The character's got a whopping eight to intelligence. So your intention is to go the three blocks down that were in the directions in the flyer? Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Every now Got and it. then constantly checking the flyer. Like, is this the right? Is this, Are we sure we're... I probably made like three wrong stops. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I, I just wrote down like green and purple painted cottage and like waterfall is too far. <laughs> so that's all I know. Now, was it purple and green or green and purple? 
there's got to be no way we don't hit the waterfall at some point. Like, we definitely go too far. It's up to you. Tell me what you do. I'm I'm following their lead, um, because they're the ones that are infected already. <laughs> I don't want to accidentally stumble into some dust. Mm, I see. Yeah, I'm going to keep a lookout for, for dust as well, because, like, I don't have very high wisdom or intelligence, <laughs> so I'm really not a good um, leader slash tracker character. <laughs> Oh, what a crew we have assembled. Um, yeah, we're going to make our way to the the green and purple cottage. Yeah, looking for a waterfall and a green and purple cottage. All right, you are standing in front of a green and purple painted cottage. Should we have the not infected person take the lead from here? Yeah, maybe. I guess we wouldn't want to infect him by contact with him, because... Th- this or this person, um, I-, I don't know if it's a woman or a man or uh, non-binary, but very rollings. Yeah, maybe they're not infected yet. So who knows? Yeah, maybe Sinclair, you should take the lead on this one, just in case. Well, that sounds good enough for me. Um, does anybody know Barry? Uh, do they have a title they prefer? Any of us know? Do I know Barry by any chance? None of you have met Barry. No. No, I, I've never met someone named Barry Rawlings who does, like, uh, artifact stuff, so I wouldn't know them. All right. I've wrestled a bear, but that's as close as I've gotten. <laughs> I must ask, who won? It was a draw. Uh, that's better than I'd do. Much better than I'd do. Like, if I saw a bear, I'd probably just tell it to run the opposite direction and it might listen. And if not, then either I'll freeze it or I'll just try to run. To let you in on a little secret, it was like a trained bear. Like it had a muzzle on it, you know, just to make sure that nobody got too hurt or anything. But you haven't lived until you've wrestled a bear. Okay, good to know. I'll I'll put that on my bucket list then. <laughs> Maybe you can show me how. <laughs> I'm I'm happy being dead in this uh, scenario, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> because by being dead, I continue to live. Um, Stella, just like uh, just like rubs her chin trying to ponder that huh i don't get it (laughs) yeah cosmos is kind of tapping on the mask too (laughs) Uh, well i I mean i I guess you can feel most alive when you're almost dead but when you're actually dead you're not that alive i mean i felt really alive when i got bitten by a snake once it almost cut me in half but i felt really alive right afterwards i gotta tell you that all right well uh now that we've been comparing near-death experiences and whether they make you feel alive or not. Sinclair will, uh, stroll up, all confident, to Barry Rowling's dwelling, rap on the door, and get ready to make a great first impression. The door opens, and a tall, wide half-orc wearing khaki shorts and a safari-style button-up shirt beams down at you. Fire-breathing kittens, I presume. I'm Barry... Barry Rawlings, which fire-breathing kittens do I have the pleasure of meeting tonight? I will give the activation snap for the cloak. Hello, Barry! I am Sinclair of the fire-breathing kittens, and I am joined by two of my fellow guild members. Hi, I'm Stella, and um, Sinclair is borrowing my cloak. Doesn't it look really good on them? <laughs> Fabulous. And I am Cosmos, also enraptured by that cloak on you. It looks great. Thank you so much. Welcome to my home, Cosmos, Stella, and Sinclair of the Fabulous Cloak. Would you like to come in? Um, sure. It's just that uh, Cosmos and I, we kind of have a bit of a, a dust situation, like the Ekenblim, I think it's called. Yeah, Ekenblim dust. It got on me a while ago, so I was exposed to it, and it just got on... Uh, Cosmos, um, just now we were fighting some zombies. So, yeah, I just wanted to let you know that. Figured that'd be something that you might be interested in. Oh, no. Those energetic little particles will pass right through your skin and bury themselves into you, seeking your life core. Well, don't worry. I've designed a magnet that'll draw it out if it gets inside you. Oh, really? Yes, please come in. Okay. Gonna stroll on in. Okay. Me too. Barry turns his back goes to a shelf and withdraws a foot-long cast iron rod and says, I designed this to pull out any dust that buries under your skin. We wouldn't want to leave that in there. 
Based on the harmonics for the school of magic this dust vibrates at, I would deduce that that would be quite transformative. And do a perception check, everybody who has touched dust. And I, I just say, as, as Barry says that, I'm just like, yeah, those are words. <laughs> a perception check that is a dirty 20 for me. 16 for me. Both of you feel the moment he carried that cast iron magnet wand out from the shelf and got close to you with it, you felt a dancing deep within you. It feels like there's something itching under your skin. <laughs> and if you let him, he'll bring the rod closer to you and the itching feeling gets more intense as the dust exits your skin, floats through the air and collects on the rod. Ooh, that's a new experience. I just like itch myself. <laughs> Uh, and Stella. Everyone else, please take your headphones off for a second. <gasps> I'll wave you back in. Oh, boy. Hi, Stella. It's just you and me. Oh, hi. Um, <laughs> okay. I I'm not, I'm not nervous at all. Uh-huh. <laughs> what's, what, what's going on? <laughs> Stella, the dust exits your skin, flowing out of you and toward the magnet iron rod. Golden and glittery, rising up from your skin and flying through the air to the rod, more and more of it flows. Wait, how much was inside you? When did this all get here? Sure, you face-planted into a circle of Ekinblim dust back at the Hokkaido Mountain Zoo, but the amount flowing out of you now is far more than that. So much more. Your mind races, thinking back to a time when you could have encountered Ekinblim dust before the Hokkaido Mountain Zoo. Had you encountered Ekinblim before? Surely not. No, definitely not. But then, as more of the dust leaves your body, your mind clears. A memory emerges. Back in college, your brother Sterling, who had always been better than you at everything you both tried, had hosted a party right before an exam. In a display of impressive but arrogant showmanship, top student at the Atrios Academy of Wizardry, Sterling, had drawn a conjuration circle. And he had indeed conjured something incredibly powerful. In a shimmer of gold dust, that beautiful, dryad-like, red-headed elven lady with luna moth wings had appeared. Her mesmerizing golden eyes had looked around the room, taking in the scene. She had been intrigued by you mortals, and had in one look understood your position as an underdog forever in your brother's shadow. Oh, your head hurts. Ow, a sharp pain. Maylorian. Her name was Maylorian. She had chosen you, reached out her delicate hand to yours, and you had accepted. Oh, your head. You had stepped into the circle with her, and she had... Ah, blinding pain. Your head. Your vision is going dark. The space behind your eyes is pounding now. Trying to remember any more is going to make you pass out. All you can recall is her beautiful red hair and luna moth wings and that velvety voice as she offered to grant you a favor if you would grant her one in return. The memory fades, but leaves you thinking of the flapping of those luna moth wings and the way the air shimmered as a fine moth wing dust was briefly suspended in it. And I'm going to wave them back in. And you just hear, hear me shout, Me! Melorian! <gasps> what? What indeed? What was that? Um, that that's all. Um, you, you heard me shout, Melorian. Melor who's Melorian? Um, and yeah, am, am I like back to consciousness essentially? Yep. Oh, I. Uh, mm, oh, just someone that I that that I that I know. Uh. Yeah, like, you know how I said that I was exposed to a Ken Blim dust before? Like, I was exposed to a lot more than just, uh, tripping into a circle. I just realized that now, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's some, it's someone that I, that I, that I know, and, oh, God, she's so pretty. But, okay, what, what were we talking about? Well, I will pull myself away from the wall that I've been pressing myself up against, because... Zombie dust floating through the air towards a magnet, I don't want to touch it. And my friend seems to be having a fever dream, but it's over now, I think. Here's your cloak back. <laughs> oh, um, thanks. My cloak, right. And I just, like, wrap it around myself, like, very, very tightly. Are you okay? Do you want to talk about it? Uh, 
Um, I I don't know. Um, I, I don't know what really happened, honestly. I had some kind of, like, memory relapse, but I'm trying to, I'm still trying to process it. Uh, and, yeah, she, she's, she's kind of, like, <laughs> she looks a little bit embarrassed, kind of, um, for, for, for a second. Uh, but then, then she looks back at, <laughs> thanks, Sinclair. Yeah, maybe, maybe once I figured out what's, what's, what's going on, but yeah, I just remembered something that, yeah, another exposure that I had to this dust, I guess. Um, yeah, it revolves around someone that I know that did something for me. I don't know what that is. Um, yeah. And then she's going to turn back to, like, she's going to look at Cosmos for a second, then back to Barry and say, Oh, well, so did, did this, um, cast Iron Magnet Wand thing get rid of all the dust that was in, in our systems? Yes, it pulled it out. And now you can see the dust is, like, like how iron filings arrange themselves around a magnet it's clinging to the iron rod and uh yeah barry walks over to a shelf in his workshop and withdraws a gray box where the top and bottom clamshell together are two lines of gold holding it gingerly he brings the box over to you and sets it on a desk carefully leaning in slowly he holds his breath and gently opens the lid a fine powder softer than sand glitters inside it's sparkling. He, you know, takes a tool, kind of like how you can take take a piece of paper and curl it around a, a rod and mm -hmm. pushes the dust into the other dust. This dust is so magical. Each particle is a small packet of energy from the school of magic of enchantment, transmutation, or conjuration. They're so energetic that they're vibrating together, humming together in a musical note just beyond what ears can hear. How many dust particles come together changes the resonant frequency, the pitch, see? The buff hiker artificer sets down the box, saying, I'll just get a spoon here, wouldn't want to touch it with my bare hands. He turns around, then comes back and uses a spoon to scoop some dust out onto a table, which apparently is singing at a different frequency than the others. Make an arcana check, everybody. Arcana. Let's see. Ooh, 18. Oh, wow. I'm rolling well today. Uh, natural 20 makes 25. Not that well. I just got a 16. Only Sinclair hears the note. Uh, everyone else, yeah, you don't hear anything. You're just going to have to believe him. I want to get even more of this dust. If it's singing like this with just a tiny bit, he points to the small pile in the bigger clamshell box. Imagine the chorus when there's more of it together. So, uh, Barry, quick question. But you said enchantment conjuration in what other school? Transmutation. And while I do agree, the potential for this dust is amazing, isn't the whole undead curse transformative aspect a little dangerous? Don't you think we should be addressing it? Perhaps containing it? Undead? What do you mean? Oh. Oh, you don't know. What, Sinclair? Of the billowing cloak? <laughs> uh, well, this dust, there's some of it outside of town, and it was inside of the fleshy bits of a gaggle? Herd? Swarm? Horde? It, what, what do you call a group of zombies? Oh, I think it's a horde. O it's a horde? Horde sounds right, yeah. Horde sounds right? Okay. Okay, a, a whole horde of five zombies, and every one of them was infected with this. And, I mean, you, you attended this college course. Uh, you, you would probably be able to put it best, Stella. What was it that this mm -hmm. stuff did? Oh, right. Uh, college. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. College. I, I attended a college and graduated under completely normal circumstances. Not suspicious at all. Yes. College. Um, yeah, so this dust, it it's produced by these things called a Ken Blim. Um, and, like, what I... Like, what I remember the best about it is that, like, when someone's exposed to it, either when they die or if their corpse is exposed to it, they t they become mindless undead, like zombies. And you can also use it to create portals into the um, Yosekai. That's all I can remember for now. Um, oh my goodness. Yeah. Zombies? Strange creatures called Ekenblim? Portals? This is incredible. I have never heard anything about this before. I want to study it. 
Can you guys get me more of this dust? Uh, I mean, I guess from a distance, I can. Um, how about you guys? And then I'm going to look at Cosmos and Sinclair. I mean, if you're willing to get it off of me, Cosmos is definitely down to punch some more zombies. Zombies? Zombies of what? Like, deer? Uh, humans, humanoids, half-orcs. <gasps> oh my goodness. For, from what, what, from this town's graveyard? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I saw a woman with a shovel running, uh, like a dragonborn w- woman with a shovel running toward the, uh, toward the train station. Like, they were running away from these zombies, so I, I don't know what the backstory is behind that, but I guess if they were dead bodies, they came from the graveyard. Unless they were people who were, who got it and then were, uh, you know, uh, murdered, which I hope isn't the case. My goodness. Well, where could they have been exposed? Mm, I, I don't know. Honestly, yeah, I mean, those people just kept on running and we were too busy fighting the zombies to stop them. I mean, I was. I, I think, Sinclair, did you, like, shout at one of them? What? The, uh, the messy white-haired mop head. Uh, he said he would be coming back with help. It, it's been a good hour or so. I feel like help should have arrived by now. Do you think he got lost? It is easy to get lost in the woods around here. As a hiker, I've rescued many a wayward adventurer. I'm sure they'll be fine, though. Nothing really dangerous around these parts. I mean, except for the zombies. Those are new. Yeah. <laughs> Do people, like... Do you think they were trying to rob graves? Because I think I actually know at least one of them. Um, they, they might be like the crew of a, of a ship. They, they did some kind of sketchy things like uh, kidnapping. Do you think they were trying to rob the graves or something like that? Or do you think, or do you just hire people as grave diggers every now and then? Maybe they were just grave digging. Oh my goodness, I don't know. Well, now that you say that, Stella, as they uh, were getting out of sight... I, I, I do recall hearing some clinking, and at first I thought it was just, you know, various hiking accoutrements. You know, your pots, your pans, fish tackle, and I saw a shovel. And I figured, hey, you know, shovel, digging pits for stuff that needs to be done, even if you're hiking. But now that you say grave robbing, that seems like it could be a possibility. I mean, I guess if they kidnap people, they could be grave robbers, too. I don't know, it was kind of dark. I mean, I kind of recognize one of them, but, you know, zombies. Yes, that is distracting. Yeah. Um, Barry, I do have a quick question, because in your letter, uh, Cosmo, uh, you, you're the one that's been holding on to it. Uh, did you say, Barry, that you found this stuff? Where did you find it? A man brought it to me from, he said, the Hokkaido Mountain Zoo. I wonder why this dust was found where Ferris's son went missing. It was such an odd story, he told me. Ferris said that his son went to the bathrooms, which had only one door in or out. The boy, Trevor, a ten-year-old boy, black hair, tan skin, brown eyes, went in through the only door. His father, Ferris, went in to look for him after a while, but he wasn't inside. He hadn't come out, but he wasn't inside, and there was some of this dust inside there. He brought it to me to investigate it because it's very magical. And I did. I discovered that it sings. And the pitch it sings depends on how much of it, and that's why I'd like to get more to study what happens when there's enough of it. I don't know much about it, though. Hmm. I guess if you have a lot and you put it into a circle, um, it'll sing and then open a portal with it singing? I mean, yeah, the reason I was exposed to the dust, or the reason I thought I was exposed to dust, was that I tripped into a into a portal, but didn't go through the portal, you know? I just broke it. But yeah, if, if there isn't enough dust in the portal, then it won't work. Even if you try to use magic words and stuff. I, I tried it. Didn't work. Uh, Do you think that if we collect enough of it, we can open a portal too? Possibly. But I don't know. Maybe there's like a special thing you need to say to open the portal. Uh, I don't know. Well, adventurers, I would need your help to collect the dust. I'm stuck here, you know. Making and artificing stuff, and I got my job, so I'd be willing to hire you to go get me some dust. Okay, uh, I, I'm gonna... I have a crazy idea here, Barry. How much do you think you have there? You can see the gray clamshell box. You can see exactly how much he has. It's not very much. Stella, you said you've seen 
one of these circles before, before you accidentally or intentionally disturbed it? No, it, it, was, uh, a, it was completely those... an accident. Okay. With all the zombie guts we have on the road, and what's in the box, could we make a circle, you think? And maybe head over? Maybe get the kid? If the kid we disappeared could... through a circle? We could try. Stella, you would say that there's not enough dust for that. Oh. Even with the, like, the corpses? Even with the zombie corpses? You could probably get more out of them, but it wouldn't be enough. You'd need to go get some dust. Oh, okay. I mean, we need to get a lot more dust than what we have here. Uh, I'm going to look at Cosmos, because he has, like, a glittering mask that looks like kind of space. Maybe that's portal-y stuff. D do you know anything about opening <laughs> portals? I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like you might know something. You have a cool mask on. Does Cosmos know anything about uh, the other planes, opening portals, things of that nature? Roll an Arcana check. Oh boy, Cosmos is really good at these. There we go, that's the pendulum swinging back, that's gonna be a seven. Other planes exist. You can go there through portals. And the portals are very sparkly from what I've heard. Like very, that's kind of what I modeled my mask after is uh, some stuff like that. I just thought the design was really cool. I don't really know much past that. Oh, I see. So you just, like, modeled your mask after them? But, yeah, I, I do that, too. Sometimes I, like, model my fashion after things I know nothing about. Yeah, you just uh, take the visual inspiration, and then everything else is completely negligible. Exactly. Like, that's what I want to do with that um, with that lady's dress. Like, the, the one who died. Like, she won't be needing it anymore. And I wanted to inspire her my costumes after it but oh well was that a beautiful black and silver sparkling ball gown with a please use dress words here uh mermaid skirt by yeah. any chance asks barry uh was it dm because stella would have taken note of that yeah <laughs> uh yeah it was actually that's the one like one of the that was one of the zombies uh was wearing that dress well, that was old Mrs. Higginbottom. Higginbottom. She was a resident of Mishwi. Where would she have been exposed to the dust? Hmm, maybe we should look around the graveyard or something. Uh, and you know, Cosmos, I think I've actually been in a portal, but I don't remember it. Like, it's part of my memory that I just don't remember. Like, you know how I had this weird, like, moment a while ago? I think that was it. But I think I won't, I have a feeling that I went through one of those portals. But I don't know how to make one. Maybe, maybe my brother does. I have a feeling that he might. <sighs> so, I, I guess we should go get more dust? I mean, wait, are, are you gonna, like... Wait, are you gonna pay us to collect more dust? I'm gonna yes. look at the, uh, fairy. Oh, okay. Uh, what What's the going rate for glitter dust? Is it per ounce? Per hour? I'll pay you all 500 gold. Oh, Each? Oh. Yep. Okay. I mean, I, I'm, I'm game. And how much this gold do you need? I don't know. It's an experiment. So the more the better. Yes. All right. I mean, sounds like a job for us. Um, I'm going to look at the rest of the party. Well, I'm ready to get infected uh, again. <laughs> quick question, Barry. Can we borrow that dust dowser magnet rod? Of course. And he hands it to you. I can make another. Oh, wonderful. Ooh, uh, how long does it take you to make these? Maybe we could just each have one and then just go looking for uh, looking for the dust. You know how people look for um, metal or like magic? People just have a magic detector spell going and they just go around graveyards and stuff looking for it? I would need the light of a full moon, so it's going to be a while. Uh, and how was the moon when we, when we, get, when we came here? It's going to be multiple days until they can work that spell. Okay. So, what do you think, guys? Should we just go for one rod, or do you think we should wait a few, like, a bunch of days and for them to make more? I I think one rod will be fine. I mean, we know where a nice trove deposit? I, I'm not sure what you would call five corpses worth of this stuff, but we, we know where five corpses worth of it is at the very least. And now that you and I have gotten a look at it, and we're a bit more magically inclined, I, I think we would be able to track it down a bit better in the wild, so to speak. And plus, I feel like the graveyard's a good lead. Nice romantic yeah, and, stroll um, through the graveyard, then. 
Exactly. And like, I'm also pretty magically inclined, at least I think I like to think so. After all, I graduated from a magic academy. She, she smiles. Sinclair's player just had a thought, but I don't think Sinclair would have thought of this. So I'll keep my mouth shut. All right. All right. Let's go. Okay. Uh, sure. I mean, we slept on the train here, right, guys? So, team no sleep? When in doubt, blue fire mochas. That is true. All right. Well, thank you for this uh, anti-zombie dust rod. And uh, does it have to be, you know, gray and gold-lined for a storage container? Or would a shoebox do just as long as, you know, it's something to hold it? A shoebox would do. He hands you a shoebox. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, uh, Barry, where's the graveyard? That might be handy to know. He gives you a map of the town and draws an X where the graveyard is. You now possess certain directions to the graveyard. Okay, that's going to be very helpful, because, um, yeah, we're, we're pretty new to this town. So, all right, I mean, I guess we should just get going then? I'm ready when you guys are. Lead the way, Stella. Okay. You possess the cloak. Oh, yes, the, um... I am now Stella of the Cloak, and I make it, I snap my fingers, make it billow dramatically. You head off and go to the graveyard. Night has completely fallen. Who, who, calls something in the distant darkness of the woods? How long do you continue to walk through these woods, heading towards the graveyard? The whole way, As long as it takes to get there? Yeah. Yeah. Perception check. Everybody? Yep. Thirteen. It's uh, 15. 18. All three of you see rows of dark, shadowy, waist-height stone slabs neatly arranged in lines. And you hear the earth rustling 50 feet away in the 3 o'clock direction. Is it just me, or do you guys hear, like, rustling coming from the earth? Do you think it's more zombies? Uh, maybe. Um, Quick question. Are there empty graves in that direction as well? Do you mean, like, are there holes in the ground? Because, no, there's not holes in the ground. Well, I I guess the better way to describe it is, in what direction does it look like something clawed its way up or was freshly dug up? There are fresh digging patches all around here. Oh, okay. You count five. Ah, this must be where these, those five came from. Uh, okay, well, should we just, like, look around and see if we can find any more of that dust or any more, uh, zombies, I guess? Sure. Uh, I'll go ahead and Cosmos will head over to the rustling sounds if uh, you two want to investigate the graves. Yeah, and I'll I'll stay 30 feet within Cosmos, at least. Mm-hmm. Just keep an eye on what's going on. Yeah, I'll, I will stay close enough that uh, Cosmos is in my line of sight as well. Um, since I now know what three schools of magic make up this uh, strange dust... Would I be able to recognize it with Detect Magic? Yes. All right. Uh, Sinclair will turn on that uh, Eldritch Invocation again. What's the range on that? Uh, that is 30 feet. It can see through a foot of wood, uh, an inch of metal, and I think like six inches of stone, so I'm not sure what that relates to loose dirt-wise. Okay. The rustling sound is coming from 50 feet away. And you're 30 feet, so you can't feel it yet. Cosmos, you're walking towards it? Yep. A halfling, as you round the... You can see around the concrete slab. A halfling is half in, half out of the ground, reaching to free itself. I think I found another one, guys. Its eyes are vacant. It does not appear to breathe, but it does gulp air in order to emit a dull growl, which exits from its lips reminiscent of a death rattle. Yep, I found another one. All right, well, shall we? (laughs) I'm going to ready come, a ray of frost. <laughs> I'll come jogging along. Oh, whack a gnome. <laughs> Who's got the rod? Uh, definitely not me. I'll, I'll hold on to it. Yeah, it makes sense that Sinclair would have it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll... Uh, excuse me, Mr. Little Halfling Person. Uh, could you please stand still? I don't know what kind of noises a, an anti-zombie dust... Rod makes. Maybe nothing. Did you bring the rod, like, to within zero feet of the halfling? I'm, I'm kind of waving it over it like airport security. 
Okay, so like within five feet? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Make one dexterity saving throw. Well, that comes out to 14. It snaps its teeth at you, but you dodge, and the rod removes a glittering dust from the corpse, which stops flailing. Rude little bugger. Okay, I'm going to... Where's the shoebox? Lower my fists. Didn't you have the... Who did have the shoebox? Oh, uh, it's, it's right here. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it out. I have the shoebox. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to present it to Sinclair. All right, well, stubborn bit doesn't want to get off the... Here, just use my, oh, use my no. track jacket. Oh, never mind. I'll just use my mage hand. And I'm going to use my mage hand to, like, uh, to scrape it off. Oh, there we go. That's probably a bit cleaner. Yep, it's in the box. Splendid idea, and that way we're not contaminating the tracksuit. Yeah. Tracksuit is worthy of better than being cleaning material. Perception check? From all of us? Yes. Ooh, there Ooh, we go. Ooh, 22. Six. Five. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Stella sees that the tombstone shows this person was buried one week ago. Hmm. I'm going to look at the tombstone and say, oh, it looks like this this person was buried, like, really recently, just a week ago. Um, I wonder when the other people were buried last. And I'm going to go toward their, um their gravestones to see when they were buried like if it was recent or not it was recent these are the most recent deaths hmm and how so which one is the oldest like how old is the oldest death basically not too long ago maybe like a month oh that's it but yeah everyone buried beyond that date is not arising hmm interesting so it looks like anyone who was buried within a month of uh within a month ago, might have been exposed to this dust, whereas other people weren't? That's what I'm gathering. How about we go back to the five corpses, uh, retrieve the dust, and, uh, Stella, how are you with illusion magic? Oh, uh, I could make small illusions. I can also make people do things without them knowing. Or rather, they know what they're doing, but they don't know that it was my idea. That's the thing. Uh, but illusion, I can make very small illusions. Just like, and she's gonna illusion, like, the, <laughs> the, um, the, the halfling zombie, uh, like, basically right next to where it is. But, like, standing. So, like, if you took a little mental sketch of everyone and then maybe showed it off to Barry, maybe Barry could tell us who they are and what the connecting thread is, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Um... Yeah, but maybe there's, like, a source of the dust here, like a portal or something. Should we, should we look for that? I mean, my first thought is the uh, that maybe there's a new... Sinclair's blanking on the word for what a funeral home director and body prepper is. Mortician? Yes, that word. Oh. That sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sinclair's wondering if maybe there's a new mortician in town. Well, I because guess... Because if it only goes back a month... That is actually a very good... That's pretty smart, Sinclair. I feel like you would have gotten really good grades at that. You, you would have gotten really good grades if you want where I, where I did. Uh, I don't know why my mind, my mind is still caught on that. Anyways, uh, yeah, maybe we should ask some of the locals what they know about the new um, mortician in town, because that is actually a really good lead. Uh, yeah, what do you think, Cosmos? I like the idea. I'm more of the muscle, though. I, I trust in you guys to... Uh take the lead on such things and yes something something clicks for stella too and it's just like oh i think we have a mystery on our hands mysteries are so fun to read about i never thought i'd actually be solving one well except for i guess some other mysteries that i've solved but yeah mysteries are exciting all right gang let's not split up but keep an eye out for clues yeah that's a good idea um and maybe like I think we should look around the graveyard to see if there's any more of, like, the rogue dust. Because, you know, sometimes people sprinkle things on top of, um, on top of gravestones as part of, like, you know, ceremonies or something like that. So maybe they sprinkled fairy dust instead of something else. So I I would say we look around the graveyard. Perception check. Perception. Ooh, 20. Dirty 20. There is no dust here. Ah, I guess maybe no dust in the cemetery. No news is good news on that front and Sinclair you possess the piddling amount of dust that you got from those corpses wasn't really a lot 
let's let's go back and decontaminate the road, and then let's do this uh, investigation into town. You just yeah. did that. You got the road corpse dust. It wasn't a lot. Oh, oh. I, I I see. I see. All right. Well, let's go back to Barry and, and ask because while this isn't a lot, if we find the real source, that's pay dirt or pay dust. So Barry, then the morticians. Well, maybe the mortician's been here for a while, but I do suppose the mortician is a logical place to start. I'm just looking for a connecting thread, and a town this size probably only has one mortician. Not a bad idea to me. Yeah. All right. Sounds like a plan. So yeah, I, I guess we we go to the mortician first, or we go to Barry? I thought we were going to Barry and then the mortician. Yes. Well, let's do that. Then let's go back to Barry's house. Mm -hmm. Hello, Sinclair, Stella, and Cosmos. Did you bring me back enough dust to make a circle? Enough? Uh, we brought back I an amount of dust, but we have a couple leads that we're looking to investigate if uh, if things are connected in the way that we think they are. The, uh, well, six now, I suppose, resurrected corpses that were in infected. Uh, Stella, you want to show Barry uh, our past friends yeah um i'm going to open the box and show like the amount of dust we collected yeah this came from just the corpses um we're, we're thinking there might be another source in town oh no no I, I i meant the little illusion so maybe barry can tell us who they are what they oh. might have in common right yeah that one and yeah i'm gonna conjure up like uh a small um contained within five uh five feet and five feet cube just like how they how the zombies looked like but maybe making them less zombie like yeah these these are people who we uh who we saw i guess in in smaller proportions than we actually saw them kind of going to show him like a hologram on my hand yeah you hologram the elderly people that had been zombified they um are familiar to barry barry says oh yes that's and then i five names <laughs> and um this person uh, was a retired grandparent, uh, just, you know, took the kids to the playground and, and went about town, you know, doing retired grandparent things. This person was too, and, and this person was too, and this person, oh, big fan of the theater, you know, didn't have any grandkids though, but they love to give flowers to those actors. Oh, we'll miss them so much. Yep. And that is what Barry can tell you about those people. He didn't know them very closely because they were... Retired grandparents. So it's all grandparents, and then we've got, it was one halfling child? No, the halfling was uh, old. Okay. Really old. Okay. Gotcha. But then we've got a... Barry, did they all live in a senior living facility, or were they all still independently living? Independently living. We don't have a senior facility here in Mishwi. Well, it's really great that this town supports the uh, elderly being able to be self-sufficient. Um, I guess the follow-up question is, uh, how long's your mortician been in town? We don't have a mortician here in Mishwi. Oh. People get processed in, uh, Nikimui, and then they, you know, then they get shipped back. Yep, been using that same mortician for a hundred years. And... And I'm gonna tell you guys, mortician, not the right path. <laughs> I'm just wondering, hmm. you mentioned all of these elderly people... All of them were retired? All of them had children that they were taking care of? No, not this one. This one uh, didn't have any grandkids and mostly just went outside to go to the theater. Went to the theater? Mm-hmm. Yep. But the other two, they uh, they were off. I would see those at the playground, you know, hanging out with their grandkids, sitting on a bench, watching them. Wait, were these us? People, uh, were these people, like, were they close friends? Did they hang out together? A lot or were they like didn't know each other very well they didn't know each other very well but i i don't know them either so maybe they were friends i don't know you never oh, okay. know who's having an affair too Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> i mean true maybe someone knows some gossip uh yeah that might be looking into just some gossip around town hashtag uh, life in your 70s am i right <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah sinclair you look like you wanted to say something Oh, those crazy swinging 70-year-olds. Oh my. <laughs> um, I'm no expert on sand, but it sounds like five of our 
resurrected friends may have had a lot of exposure to playground sand, and I can't imagine it'd be too difficult to mix in some of this stuff with your run-of-the-mill playground sand. You know, the kids roll around in it, they give grandma or grandpa a big hug when they leave or when they say hello. So, I'm thinking maybe the playground next? I do remember seeing one coming into town, or am I misremembering? Yeah, there, there was one coming into town. And at worst, it is possible that if some of these grandparents were infected, some of these grandkids were infected, and children are nothing if not messy. Have, have you heard of any, like, um, kids who have gone missing, or do you know of anyone who might know that kind of stuff? Yes. I watch the local news, you know, um, the illusion that plays sometimes, and uh, they they said recently that uh, about, you know, a month ago or so, I don't know, there have been two kids that went missing, and one adult. Yeah. And where was that? Was like was that in this town or was it in a different town? Yeah, in this town. Oh, in this town. Yeah, it's pretty unusual. We don't have very many missing people. Do you happen to know where they were last seen? Yeah, the kid, the elf went missing from the school, and the fire person kid went missing from the playground, and uh the human, that was an adult human, they were an actor at the theater. Well, that's quite a few leads pointing us to the playground and a couple leads pointing us to the theater. Where would you two like to start? Uh, I would say maybe the playground. Maybe we can, if we can find some dust mixed in with the sand, that would be good. And then we can go to the other places. Let's start with the playground and uh, see what that might give us. Plus, I'm a little more concerned about kids than actors. The crazy lifestyle those folks live, I'm not too worried about them dying anytime soon. Kids, you sneeze on them and you have horrible disasters. Yeah, plus, like, a lot of actors, I, I know, um, they're not... I mean, they're willing to try any kind of dust they see, so... <laughs> Stella. <laughs> Stella knows some shady people, okay? <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, they have, that dust has some pretty good effects. Don't, don't ask me about it, you know? <laughs> she kind of, like, looks away. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> hey there, this'll help you live forever. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty much how what they were doing. <laughs> right, so the playground first, then. And as our heroes head off to the playground, we're going to take a quick break. Joining us today were Cosmos. The person playing Cosmos is very sad at all of these actor jokes. <laughs> Sinclair. Ah... Sinclair's just excited to be able to be on a swing again. And Stella. Wow, what a day or night. Just crazy stuff happening. Yeah, just crazy stuff happening around here. And uh, if, if you want to, if you think the stuff that happens in this podcast is too crazy or you want more crazy stuff to happen, especially if you want more crazy stuff to happen, be sure to leave us a review on iTunes today. And um, yeah, we can read it out for you on air and just see... If how crazy you think we are. And yeah, please leave us a review. Bye. Bye. See you soon, everyone. Bye bye We hope that you're enjoying this episode of the Fire Breathing Kittens podcast. Please leave us a review on iTunes.com. If you leave us a review, we'll read it on air. It's fun listening to the words of your review get read by the characters you know and love, so go to iTunes.com and leave us a review today. Can you think of someone who might enjoy this podcast? Please share it with them. Is their birthday coming up? A special anniversary? Would you like us to wish them a happy day on your behalf? You can arrange for us to read your shout-out on air at firebreathingkittenspodcast.com through our partnership with the website Buy Me a Coffee. Do you enjoy reading books? You can find paperbacks and ebooks based on our adventures on Amazon.com in the bookstore, Fire Breathing Kittens, that part's all one word, podcast. The authors do a great job of adapting the stories into fun novels. We also have official merchandise on Redbubble.com. Imagine owning a notepad with the Fire Breathing Kitten logo on the front, or a t-shirt with one of your favorite characters. 
And lastly, I'd like to take a moment to sincerely thank all of you. We don't pay to advertise this show, so the only way we can grow is through the support of listeners like you. Thank you. Welcome back to Fire Breathing Kittens, a 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons podcast. Everybody roll a d20. That would be an 8. 5. For me. 17. The number that I had written down previously was a... 7. So who's the closest to 7? I believe I drew the short straw in this encounter. Alright, what happened last time? Well, last time, my dear friends from the Fire Breathing Kittens Guild Hall, Stella and Cosmo, were on our way to the small town of Mishway. It was a, you know, leisurely train ride and short stroll away from Nicomoy. On the way into town, in the early hours of the night, we were suddenly surprised to find a blue dragonborn and a very squirrely white-haired man in his thirties come running like hell out of the forest towards us, apparently with a whole horde of zombies hot on their heels. So we did the heroic thing, stopped the undead, uh, but you know, those folks never came back with the help we requested. They must have gotten lost. But we didn't let that dampen our spirits. We continued on our mission to find a Barry Rowlings, who is an artificer in town who sent us a request for some fire-breathing kittens to come in, as he had discovered this strange magical dust with incredible power, or at least the potential for it. So we found Barry. He let us know a little bit about this Echoblim dust, and uh, apparently has a dowsing rod, an anti-zombie dust rod. I'm not really sure. It's a work. It's a name that's getting workshop still. But uh, fortunately, both Stella and Cosmo are no longer infected by zombie dust. He then offered us 500 gold apiece to find more of the stuff, because he's hoping to collect it to make a teleportation circle to rescue some missing children. Now, we went out to the graveyard, because that seemed like a logical place for zombies to come from, tracked down another aspiring zombie, gave it the old dowsing rod treatment, and then realized, well, all these corpses seem to have passed away relatively recently. So, asking Barry for more information, it seems like most of our corpses are elderly grandparents who frequented the playground and one who frequented the theater. So we're continuing our investigation and collecting more magic dust, hopefully from the playground. All right. Great recap. What are you all doing? We are making our way to the playground, and I guess it's dead of night, right? Yep. Yeah. You guys go to the playground. Yeah, on, You are on the... standing... Hmm? Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, like, on the way, I wanted to chat with Cosmos and Sinclair a bit. Because, mm. like, the streets are pretty deserted, right? There's, like, are there a lot of people around, or... Nope. It's about midnight now. Yeah, so I guess there aren't many people around. And if they are, then they're probably crazy enough not to remember anything I say. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh... Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna, uh, well, I, I'm gonna look at them, and I'm going to say, oh, yeah, and, um, I I wanted to tell you guys something, I guess, because it pertains to this Akemblin dust situation a lot, and you guys noticed that I had a bit of a moment back at, like, Barry's place. Yeah, you kind of went a little bit glassy-eyed there. I assume that, that's what happens when you're coming down from zombie dust. Yeah, um, did you have that too, Cosmos? No, I got the tingly, weird sensation of, like, something being drawn out of my skin, but beyond that, no. We just watched you for a little bit and made sure that you were okay. I appreciate that, you guys. Um, yeah, thanks for giving my cloak back. It's, like, the dead of night right now, so I probably won't need it for a little while, but it's it's nice to have it. <laughs> can look at Sinclair. Oh, of, of course. I, I would never be so bold as to keep something lent. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I don't think I told you guys about the first time that I was exposed to it, or the second time, because I thought there was only one time. 
And it was at the zoo, actually. Um, like, you remember that Barry mentioned that this kid had gone missing from the zoo, uh, Trevor? That might have been on the same day that I tripped and fell into that, um, into that dust portal. And, like, when I learned about portals, I guess. Though I learned about them earlier, too. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it was during that whole zoo fiasco thingy. Um, and if more children have gone missing with, from the zoo, I'm going to have to have a talk with the CEO because that's not supposed to happen. He was, he's supposed to have tightened security by now. But yeah, that was like the second time I got exposed to it. And when I tried to make a portal out of it, like, well, all three of us, because I was with Wing and um, Skirmish. Like, yeah, it was just a fire-breathing kitten exposure to the zoo. Uh, but yeah, the first time was a time that I didn't remember. And I remembered it in the in Barry's uh, shop, I guess. Um, yeah, apparently I did a favor for someone who had big moth wings. Or she did a favor for me, I think. Uh, yeah, she was very pretty. Went by the name Maylorian. And I never understood why I graduated from college, because I had very bad marks, but maybe she had something to do with it. And maybe the Ekemblim dust did, too. And my brother, Sterling, conjured her. So, um, like, I guess if any of you have a sending stone, we could try to contact him and ask him how to open a portal, because he might know. I didn't know, and he never told me. So this is the first time I'm finding out that my brother knows how to make portals, and that I have, like, a chunk of memory missing. So, yeah, that's what, that's what happened. Well, I don't have a sending stone, but it sounds like your brother could be a big help later on, if this continues to be an issue. Yeah. I wonder if he remembers, or if he forgot the whole thing like I did. He has like, I mean, I had a lot to drink that night, so maybe that's why I forgot, but maybe there's another reason why I forgot that. And I have no idea what favor I perform for this lady, for her to do a favor for me. But I hope to meet her again. She was, she was really pretty. Mm. I wonder if it has anything to do with what Barry talked about, how the dust sings. Yeah. I'm thinking I don't that... know, something about that stuck out to me. And maybe that has something to do with why you're suddenly able to remember something that you forgot the last time you encountered this thing. Yeah, and I guess I could have remembered more, but like my head just hurt too much and I was gonna pass out if I tried remembering anymore. But the the singing might have something to do with it. I wonder if what'll happen if we get like more dust. If it'll sing more, if it's gonna sing louder. If we find more at the playground, do you want to expose yourself and then have me disinfect you and see if we can jog more of your memory? Sure, if if that works. I mean, I don't have any more headaches, so I'm ready to go. Well, I, I think I see the playground uh, just around the corner, so, <laughs> I mean, if our hunch is right, I mean, I suppose we'll find out if it works in about five minutes or so. Yeah, if we can find enough dust there, but it's a good place to look. Okay, so you guys go to the playground? Mm hmm 200 feet away, across a neatly trimmed grass lawn, stands a playground consisting of a miniature castle, three slides, and a climbing rope. There is also a swing set with two swings, and a bench. Well, I'm going straight to the swing set. I haven't done this since high school. Oh, excellent. I'm going to do the thing where you stand on the swing, <laughs> uh, and, and try and get it to swing as much as you possibly can. Make an acrobatics check. Ooh, acrobatics check. That'll be a 12. All right. You pull on the ropes and bend your body and start swinging higher and higher. And with a 12, it <laughs> kicks you off like your feet slide and you somersault through the air, but land on your feet and raise your arms. Do the other two cheer? Yes, I, I do. I, I applaud. Hey. That was amazing. I go and give the uh, give the hand to the ear and encourage them to get a little bit louder, a little bit louder with their cheering. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm gonna I'm gonna high five you with my mage hand, <laughs> and then and then with my regular go. hand, I'm gonna give you three high fives. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just running down the line, high fiving them all. <laughs> Dude, that was that was awesome. Do you like? Are you an acrobat? Is is that what you do? Um, there's some acrobatics involved in it. Uh, 
My art is the art of combat. Hmm. I mean, it does look pretty pretty artsy when you punch those zombies. Maybe we'll get to see more of that. I mean, I guess you could just punch the swings if uh, if nothing else. Yeah, just start shadow boxing in the corner. And then I I watch. I'm just like, huh, interesting. <laughs> Never seen someone make an art out of uh, fighting before, but. Well, let's see if I still have the old nimbleness in me. Uh, Sinclair is going to try and jump off the swing when it's at its highest point and uh, tuck and roll as they land to, you know, be in a standing position after the rolling and hitting the ground. Make an acrobatics check. Uh, 23. That you do. Still got it. You show up your friend the monk. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I go and give the 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 bowing down uh, motion. I, I give Sinclair three high fives as well, <laughs> and, and I clap. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, I I went through a little bit of a, a parkour for phase in my younger years. That that's what me and my friends did for uh, practicing our landings. Some a few of us almost broke our legs, but it was fun. Yeah, parkour, the art of travel. Very nice. Oh, wait, I, I've got something. And I, I'm going to try to do, like, a magic trip trick where I kind of, like, disappear. Um, I, I'm going to go on the swings. And, like, I, I guess when they aren't looking, I'm going to try to, like, put my mage hand right under the cloak. And then I'm going to, like, when I get to the, like, highest point of the swing, I'm going to, like, misty step right onto the, um, onto the, uh... Is it called on the slide and have my uh mage hand just like flutter the the cape as if it's still like swinging <laughs> so I, i'm gonna like be in two places at once kind of i'm gonna i'm gonna try to do that <laughs> the echoes of your laughter as you all have a good time on the playground rebound from the walls of houses hundreds of feet away in the dark nighttime atmosphere <laughs> all right shall we get down to business then Yes, you're never too old to enjoy a playground. Never, never at all. Yeah, and, and Stella's still a teenager. <laughs> so, like, she's just she's just having a, a ball right now. <laughs> and then when you say you get to business, she's like, oh, right, yeah. That's what I came here to the playground for. Mm-hmm. I, I totally didn't forget. And then she just <laughs> goes down the slide and just, like, uh, as if nothing happened, just puts her cape back on. <laughs> Uh, I will detect magic on the sand around the playground. I'm assuming there's sand around the playground. Every playground has sand. Sure. You find a tiny bit of dust, but the much larger amount is around the bench. Mm. Like on the bench or... In the grass around the bench. Huh. As I uh, get closer, is there like a, a dust trail or like any seeming uh, indication of how the dust got deposited here. It seems like a very strange place. There is a gradient with the highest abundance at the bench and a gradual tapering off in the grass around it. Hmm. It's like someone opened a giant bag right above this bench and then just dumped it all. A bunch by the bench. Hmm. Well, first we should decontaminate this. Um, is there any plaque or something saying this bench was made in so and so in memory of so and so yes in memory of so and so <laughs> good old so and so did it come up in the last few months no the bench is 10 years old hmm. so this probably would have been where the grandparents sat and watched the children ah yeah that that makes sense um I'm gonna look for any like do I see any dust there? Like, um, besides just like Sinclair's uh magic stuff? Uh I mean the same dust that Sinclair also sees. Oh okay. yes. Um Okay, well I I'm gonna roll around in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was the plan, right? <laughs> it <laughs> it buries itself it. into your skin. <laughs> oh yeah, I rolled it around in the dust. <laughs> like Could you get it out? <laughs> Stella, you literally could have just sat on the bench. Oh, I mean, I, I guess it's just the dragon part of me. We, we like rolling and stuff. I mean, especially gold and silver, but, like, gold and dust is good enough for me. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah, yes, I can absolutely uh, decontaminate. 
I don't really know how, uh, to properly do this, so tell me if it doesn't seem to be working. Uh, is, is it working? Like, am I feeling the itching starting? Describe what you're doing, Sinclair. Uh, I am initially just holding it very, very close to, uh, Stella's hands. Stella, the dust is rising up out of your hands and floating to the iron rod. Mm, yeah. And you all can keep your headphones on for this. As he's holding it there a lot longer than Barry was, because you guys know that there's extra dust in you. I think Barry was just kind of like, here you go, quick sweep. And as the last extra dust leaves you, Stella, that was in you long, long before today, you do remember a little flash of Maylorian saying that you would see her again and that she would come visit you. And I, and I see her saying that. Like, I see yeah. her in front of me. I'm just like, you'll come visit me again? Ah, <gasps> yes! I mean... Yeah, she seems quite fond of you. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, you see Stella suddenly, like, get excited. Like, her eyes go wide. I'm just like, oh, she's gonna see me again! And she says, although you won't remember this. And then casts the spell on you to wipe your memory. Oh, I see. And then, like, Stella's gonna go quiet again. <laughs> But I'll remember you, Stella. <laughs> <laughs> and then she boops you on the nose. <laughs> Boop. And you fall asleep in your memory. Mm. And I, I was saying this out loud so you guys could have heard it. Like, uh, you, you heard her just, like, saying those random things. <laughs> Did it work? Yeah. Like, um, I, I think I got a bit more of my um, my memory, but I think the rest of it... I disappeared because the spell was cast on me, so I don't think I can get it back from this dust thingy. Which is is fine, but she says that she'll visit me again, so... okay. So is she like your fun aunt, or who, who is this woman? I, I don't know, honestly. I, I think she's like this person that my, that my brother summoned, because he was doing something stupid one time, and he summoned, uh, like, this person with wings. And I, I don't know. Like, she seems fond of me. But, yeah, she did a favor for me or something like this, and I did a favor for her, but I don't remember what it was. Um, but, yeah, no, I I don't know her very well, but I feel like I know her really well. You know what I mean? I ever have that feeling about someone where you don't know them, but you do? That sounds like most aunts. Oh, plus, maybe she's if your mom's a dr Plus, if your mom's a dragon, correct me if I'm wrong, don't dragons have wings? Uh... Wait, how'd you know that my mom was a dragon? Did I say it? I mean, I just said that. Ooh. I got, oh, I got the... uh, rewind that. Sorry, I thought... Sorry, I, I assumed, like, it'd be public knowledge that Stella, part of Argent Prout family, and Argent Prout family is headed by... I don't know your mother's name. Zamfira oh, Argentine. Zamfira. Oh, yeah, like, it would it would have spread around the guild. I, I was just saying that in character. Because, <laughs> like, um, Stella's supposed to keep it a secret, but she didn't do a very good job of it. <laughs> <laughs> essentially but like yeah dragons have wings too and like my my brother has wings like he he got the wings and the shape shifting that silver dragons can do i didn't but he only got limited shape shifting he, he got the coolest parts i just got the tail and the horns he has horns too but they're a lot smaller mine are nicer um, at least that but yeah he, he has yes. wings but her, you also have wings, some pretty sick ice magic yeah he, he didn't get the ice magic he got some weird uh Storm magic, I don't understand why, but... Yeah, I, I do like my ice magic a lot. But, yeah, um, her wings were different than dragon wings. So I, I don't think she was related to my family, though. Maybe she was related to my dad. I never... I don't know who he is, so... I'm just gonna shrug. <laughs> Alright. Uh, but yeah, like... Yeah, I, I don't know who this person is, but I feel like she's the reason why I was exposed to this dust. Or maybe my brother summoning her is... Because she took me somewhere that I don't think was in this world, but I don't remember where it was. Or I have the feeling she did. I, I don't know. It's it's very, mm. like, faded, but... Hey, if I... Next time I see her, I'll ask her. Hopefully I can remember the answers. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have, like, dealings with weird, magical people? Masking Sinclair and <laughs> Cosmos? Uh... Let, let's just say I've had a recent revelation. Um, a little bit of old memories coming back. Uh, 
the details of my relationship with Heros are a complicated one. Uh, you see Malachi flit down. Ah, yeah! You really didn't read the fine print, did you? No, no I did not. Thanks for reminding me. Hmm, fine print. So you, you had to deal with someone? Uh, yes, I, I, I don't remember the specifics and I don't remember everything. It, it, it's something I'm trying to gather, but I'm trying to be a little more cautious in my uh, search for answers. Uh, last time led, I made a hasty decision, it didn't quite go so well, and I'm still feeling terrible about what happened in regards to Wing. Oh. How's he doing, by the way? I haven't, I haven't had the heart to meet with him again. Wing? Wait, what, what does that have to do with Wing? I mean, like, last I saw him, he, he was, he looked okay, though, I don't know, he was missing all his feathers. Oh no. And, he, yeah, I mean, he looked, uh, yeah, he was missing all his feathers, there were, like, weird marks on his skin, and, yeah. Oh no. Like, he had someone, we went to the zoo together, but then they all fell out the next time I saw him. He came to babysit for my sister, but... Yeah, that's all I remember. If you, uh, next time you see him, please tell him I'm I'm very sorry and that I am terrible with advice and he should never have listened to me. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll tell him you say hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about you, Cosmos? I mean, you're, you're all mysterious. Oh, me? I'm not mysterious. My mentor, a little bit more mysterious. He's, uh, his name is Zographos. He's uh, the person that taught me to channel this power within myself. Um, but beyond that, I don't think I've had any really shady dealings. Do you want to take a little memory dust and see if it jogs anything? Ooh, yeah, sure. Let me try it. I'll, t I'll take a little bit of the dust and I'll see if... Uh, uh, if that unlocks any secret memories that Cosmos isn't aware that he has. It's tingly. Nothing happens. Okay. Well, it was worth a shot. Gave it the old college try. All right. So decontaminating the playground area, mostly the bench. Um, I think our only other lead was the theater. The theater. Yeah. Well, I think and, and the school, because I think a child went missing at the school as well. Basically anywhere that old people go. Do a perception check on the amount of dust that you have collected. Okay. Twelve. Uh, Fifteen. Oh. That is... Ooh, that's a 19 plus two, 21. All of you would say that this is a lot of dust. <laughs> but I'm assuming that you drew it out of Stella. So Stella rolled in the grass. You drew it out of Stella with the rod. And then you put it in the box. And then I touched it, uh, yeah. and then we drew it out of me. Stella was kind of like a Swiffer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Basically. Okay, yeah, you've collected a lot of dust. All right. Back to Barry's, then. All right. You head back to Barry. Knock on the door, he answers it. Barry excitedly holds out the gray clamshell box he has that holds the other dust, inviting you to pour yours in. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess we, we pour it in. As you pour the dust, make an arcana check. Everyone or just the poor? Yes, everyone. 18. Go. 11. 23. Sinclair before, and now Sinclair and Stella, this time here, as the dust cascades through the air and settles into the box, you hear an ethereal music as if a harp or flute is being played. Barry says, This dust sings such a lovely harmony. It makes me think of a beautiful place. Oh, wow. Well, that's cool. It does sound nice. You guys hear that, too? <gasps> I hear what you mean, Barry. No, Cosmos is cupping his ear and trying to put it up close to the sound, but he's getting none of that. It's, it's like... It's just... I don't know. Stella, you seem more musically inclined than me. How would you describe it? Oh, I... Uh... Musically inclined? Okay, I mean, that's... I've never heard someone describe me as that, but it sounds like a nice little melody. Like, it's, um... It's just like this nice sound that reminds me of a pretty place. Like, um... I don't know, it's, it's like a, it's like kind of a major tune, I would say. Bit of a harmonic scale in there, too. Exactly, says Barry. He hands you the clamshell box with all of the dust and said, You mentioned that you had seen it in some kind of arrangement before? 
Yes, um, in a circle arrangement. Um, and apparently when it's arranged in a circle like that, when there is enough of it, and when there is like an activation to it, it turns into a portal. I actually saw that at the at the zoo. Um, it was a portal, but then it got broken, basically. So it has to be an unbroken circle. As an artificer, he has an area of his floor that is clear and available to draw magic circles upon. He gestures to you towards it and says, Would you like to try? Uh, I'm gonna look at everyone else and say, Would anyone else like to try? Would you like to do it all together? Sure. Well, I'm down. Yeah, for some reason, I, I feel like skipping in a circle and like just pouring it down in a circle is so, sounds like a fun way to do it. So, yeah, let's let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> do we all skip merrily in a circle? <laughs> Stella will. <laughs> Cosmos will. Oh, sure. Before, before any arcane experiments, it's important to follow safety procedures. Everyone, take some safety goggles. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, Stella already has her sunglasses. <laughs> She puts and Cosmos on. has the mask, so it covers the eyes as well. Well, all right. Apparently only Sinclair is the one that uh, cares about laboratory safety. <laughs> as we pr- proceed to skip, like, flower girls <laughs> and dance merrily in a circle. Around zombie dust. <laughs> Around zombie dust, yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It scatters on the ground very loosely, and although you try to make a circle, you mostly just make a mess. (laughs) That sounds about right. Yep. (laughs) At least my mage hand to straighten it out a bit. (laughs) Okay. Now that it's neatly aligned, like if you were to take like a Morton salt pourer and like pour it, you know, Mm -hmm. now it's a circle. Okay. And uh, is there some... Ignition that we have to use, uh, some magical arcane spark. I don't know how these things work. Can I try to make an arcana check? Or, yeah, I'll try to make an arcana check first, then I'll ask Barry. I rolled a 15. Do you remember last time how you talked to it in Sylvan and nothing happened? Oh. <laughs> well, if I talk to it in Sylvan, it's not going to do anything. Um, Barry, do, do you know how what kind of words open a portal? Oh, what? Sorry, I was distracted listening to it sing. Oh, it was singing? Yes, it's making such a lovely harmony. Don't you hear it? Do we hear it? Well, everybody but me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. It It is beautiful. I'm so sorry you can't hear it. Cosmos, make a perception check. Oh, boy. I reckon this is probably my last chance. Oh, no, don't drop the dice. Oh, no, it's worse. That's a nine. Maybe if you ask your friends, they can demonstrate. Yeah, can you can you can, hit me with the notes? Hit me with the notes. I think like maybe then I can get like some kind of idea going. I'm going to use minor illusion to amplify it, kind of like to to sing exactly what I hear. So this is the part where the players are going to sing a note. <laughs> sing for me, <laughs> everybody. Da- yeah. Oh. Cosmos, you want to join in? (laughs) The magical dust circle lights up, and it sparkles on the inside. Ooh. I think I hear that music you guys were talking about. Music making podcast. Yeah. (laughs) I apologize for the one-star reviews I spawned with my terrible off-key notes. (laughs) It was brief. They it's been a long time since I've been in choir. <laughs> <laughs> so, cool. what does so, the portal look like? It's glittering. It's right in front of us. Correct, correct. Wait it's a shining. second. No, nope, nope. Didn't see this. Did not see this before. That was somebody else. <laughs> does it look familiar to me? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this this is it. We We just made a portal into... The realm of the Ekenblim, I guess. So, yeah, good job, you guys. And I'm going to hold my hands out for high fives. And I'm going to hold a third one out for Barry. <laughs> Barry high fives, you too. Hell yeah. So, do we just dive in? I was going to say, I've been a test subject to start the day, and I feel like it only appropriate that I be the test subject to end it. Yeah, I don't see why not. All right. Cosmos is going to take a deep breath and... uh Almost as if one were flying off the top turnbuckle, he's going to dive through the portal. 
Once inside, everything outside disappears. The blackness vibrates and hums around you. You thump onto a solid ground in this blackness. Ow, my elbow. Can we see him? No. And that's the How end of Cosmos. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, well, I'm going to go in next. I'm going to make my cape billow and then just jump in. Once inside the circle, everything outside disappears. The blackness vibrates and hums around you, and Cosmos is holding... It looks like he injured himself. Ow. Kind of thought there would be something soft to land on. Yeah. Oh, it's just hard yeah, floor. Yeah, I was hoping so. Well, uh, Barry, if I don't come back, you seemed like a pretty cool dude. It was nice to meet you for the past couple hours. Uh, Sinclair's just going to take a casual step forward, expecting it to be solid underneath, and then... Ah! Oh, no, you Because, you, put... you know... It's solid. It's oh, it like, does? Yeah, it's like you continued walking, except that now everything outside the circle disappears and the blackness vibrates and hums around you. Oh, that actually worked. Holy crap. Why are you two lying around? Did We thought there would did be... Did you two... We thought there would be less floor. Oh. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just crouching here, um, right beside Cosmos to make sure he's, he's okay. Yeah, it just stings. All right. You all feel full of potential. Where would you like to go? Full oh, where, of potential? Where is he? So we can just go anywhere we want? Uh, I mean, back to the Fire Breathing Kittens Guild Hall or back to Barry to get paid? I'm not sure. You guys, oh, he you guys did hand you 500 gold, just to clarify. Oh, You cool. all have Red. 500 gold each, because you brought the dust. Yeah, you, you guys figure it out. I'll, I'll just go wherever you guys go. Or where one of you guys go. Well, what's around us? What, what can we immediately see? Blackness. Um... Just for clarification, is this like season one Stranger Things blackness? <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, it's like completely opaque. Can't see anything in it. I think the first thing Cosmos would do, you said full of potential. Mm -hmm. Like it feels like anything is possible. Mm -hmm. I'm going to test that by thinking about my master. And I'm going to see if I can walk forward and end up there. Cosmos steps out of the circle. And the DM looks up your master. <laughs> Are, can you tell me a bit about them? Uh, Zografos, you have kind of the run of them. You will be the first person to fill in a lot of the blanks that I left. Um, they're mysterious. They are. They wear robes to cover how quietly jacked they are. Um they're also a retired former wrestler. Physically, where would they be located at? Oh, gosh. I don't know. I didn't <laughs> insert the meme of I didn't think I'd get this far. <laughs> like, are they, are they alive? Are they, you know, like... They're alive. Um, yeah? Okay. Because the last thing I remember is they were the ones that sent me on my excursion to discover more about myself and discover my true potential and power okay you it's midnight okay you step out into a bedroom and there is the sleeping form of your mentor zografos they're curled up under a blanket and you're in their bedroom it's oh. like one o'clock in the morning <laughs> i turn around is the portal still behind me yes okay i'm gonna jump back into the portal everybody cosmos is back okay so um we can go anywhere we can go anywhere we're in a portal where we yeah we can go, i've tested it and i'm fairly confident that we can just go anywhere um sinclair's gonna think about dylan tars uh, the arcane academy they were their first memory really okay um i'm not sure how familiar you are with the backstory i wrote um i i have left a lot of details of Sinclair fairly open-ended as well. Um, what, what do I see? You're standing in blackness. Do you move? Uh, There's a I, ring I, of gold circle light around your feet. Yes, I, I will move out of the circle while thinking about that. You are at Dilintar's Arcane Academy. Does it look like it's in ruins? Does it look like it is, uh, like, kind of the middle of the school year? It's got construction scaffolding around it because parts of it appear to have been exploded. 
and it is being reconstructed. Huh. I will, uh, step back. You're back in the circle. All right, it's not time travel. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's only the present. Hmm, interesting. So, uh, you guys just, like, went out of the circle and then you went back in the circle? Was there a circle there as well? Yeah, there was, well, there was another portal. Yeah. Oh. It was like a door was left open. So you go it's there a and a door is just it. left open? Huh. I am going to, well, if I can go anywhere, uh, I, I'm going to think of Maylorian, and then I'm going to try stepping out to see if that's going to do anything. Your nose bumps off of the blackness as an arch fey, or uh, hey, spoilers, she is protected against being portaled too unless she wills it. Oh. Ooh. Well, yeah, no, you can't sneak up on and backstab her. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Oh, okay. So I I just thought about like going to a person, and I guess it doesn't work if you go to a person. Uh, I'm just gonna try going, like w when I, I'm gonna try going back to my old dorm room in Atrios Academy. Do an Arcana check. Three. <laughs> okay. Um, with the three, you'd say that Abjuration was the school of magic. It's very low, so I can just give you this. It seems protective that you couldn't go to Malorian. Oh. Like you can re you it's very low so you you don't know what spell or like like sort of like when you look at just a web page and you can't see the code behind it you you could not reprogram this protection spell but it was a protection spell that you encountered not anything like it's not that the portal can't go to people it is mm. that you bounced off a protection spell oh i see that okay she had written you can tell she wrote it and that's all you can tell because that was only a three no additional information was given. I see, but St Stella would know that from a three as well, because it was just like, yeah, I, the player, know that, but then I was wondering if Stella knew that, because she mm -hmm. only has a ten intelligence, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, it looks like a padlock in your brain that she locked. I see, okay. And then I, I try to go to my dorm room, um, which is like a also a bit... Yeah, H how would, could I go there? It's been six years since you graduated. There's a person sleeping in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this this is amazing. Okay, uh, I just try to think of what mischief I could I could cause. I'm gonna like try to sneak. I'm gonna rearrange everything in the room. <laughs> just like, well, I mean, I'm gonna rearrange a few things that someone so that they knew that someone was in there. But I'm gonna try to do it stealthily. <laughs> so, oh, I rolled like a fourteen in stealth. Do I wake that person up? They do not wake up. Their passive perception is less than that. I also leave a bottle of my whiskey that I have behind for them. And and then nice. I go back. <laughs> oh, nice. They're going to think they got haunted by the coolest ghost ever. That's basically what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, the booze fairy visited my dorm room. <laughs> the booze fairy. <laughs> Can I have a booze fairy? <laughs> oh, my God. I wish I could have one, too. <laughs> yeah. Let's all, I think of the booze fairy, and that's where I go. <laughs> no, for, from now on, like, it's just going to be Stella's pastime to uh, to go into someone's dorm room using uh, using one of those portals and just leave behind a bottle of nice booze. Well, I think we should, probably, well. we should probably go back and, and tell Barry what we've figured out. Wait, yeah, a, wait, 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 wait. Before we leave, the, who was the child that was missing? We should probably find them. Ooh, oh, good point. <gasps> hmm. Like, I don't think I know this child, so I never got a description of them. You did. Um, oh, we did. They have black hair, tan skin, brown eyes, and are a 10 year old human boy named Trevor Horbiger. Hmm. Their father is Ferris Horbiger. And you were at the Hokkaido Mountain Zoo the same day that Ferris was, so honestly, you've bumped into Ferris before. Oh, you just didn't know it. I see. So, but like, um, thinking back to it, do I recognize that it's the same person, kind of? You were given a very thorough physical description by Barry earlier in this adventure, and right. you definitely do know that Trevor Horbiger is missing. Yeah. You don't know that you walked past them at the Hokkaido Mountain Zoo, but you have a, a suspicion that you are familiar with this person because you mm. were there and there was a kid missing that day. I if you listen to Doo Doo the Poo Doo at the Zuzu, they explicitly interacted with Ferris Horbiger. You guys didn't go to the bathrooms, so you didn't get to interact with Ferris on camera. But maybe you did off camera. I don't know. 
Um, well, I, I'm going to say that to the rest of the to the rest of the crew. I'm going to say, oh, like, remember that Trevor kid that Barry was talking about? Uh, I think I can actually, I mean, I know how they look like, so maybe I can try portaling to them. I mean, I tried portaling to someone that I knew who they looked like, but there was a lock on it. I don't know, it was some weird magic thingy that she did. But, yeah, I, I'm going to try that and see what happens. And then Wait, I'm going to try could, that. Oh. Could, could you show us what he looks like so all of us could go there? I'm going to try to minor illusion a, uh, like an, an image of what I think he looks like. Yeah, and all of you also heard the description, too. You were there when Barry described Trevor. Maybe right. Barry had, like, a portrait of Trevor that Ferris had left with them, if that makes you guys more comfortable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, because going off a verbal description, it's like, I'm sure I'm thinking of someone very different than the other two players right now in my head. <laughs> Shall we all walk all right. through? Trevor, yeah. Trevor, Trevor. <laughs> we hold hands. <laughs> arm in arm. Yes. Trevor finding brigade. Are, are we skipping? Like we're tossing flowers from baskets? Sure. <laughs> dead dead graveyard flowers. I, I like that. I like that imagery. <laughs> Stepping out of the portal, you emerge into an incredibly classy large room. This aristocratic, wealthy, opulent space is oversized for a bedroom, but that is indeed what it is, judging by how there is a large fluffy bed in it. There is a window that looks out onto green-leafed tree branches. A horrible rotting odor, like a dead body, fills the air, and a corpse is splayed out upon the marble floor over there, as if this were entirely normal. There is a massive walk-in closet with shiny polished wood walls and metal inlay. Reclining in a contoured cushion chair with a black box over his eyes is a ten-year-old boy with tan skin and black hair. He doesn't see you because his eyes are covered by a helmet box that, based upon the way his hands are moving and his expression is changing, is displaying some sort of interactive illusion. And then if you guys picture a really fancy gamer chair with a VR headset. Nice. Like, players just going, nice. The character is just like, why does a kid have a box over his head? Sinclair is like, all right, I like it. I could stay a uh, body. All right. <laughs> Get some scented candles, get a corpse <laughs> removal service. Oh, it, uh, there's a kid here. Oh, wait, that's the kid we're looking for. Oh. There's a He's lot doing pretty to well for himself. about this whole situation that we've stumbled into. Yeah, like, this place is so fancy. For a second, I thought I went home, but no. Like, this place has gold trimmings instead of silver. Uh, what do you guys think we should do? I think we should take that box off his head? I mean, he seems to be having a good time. Do you yeah, think the kid knows about the go. body? I, I say we go do the old snatch and run. Yeah, let's let's do that. Because um, I, I don't I don't want to see what caused that in the middle there. That I don't want to end up like them. Right. Yeah, um, like if we if we kidnap mm -hmm. a kidnapped child, like two wrongs makes a right, right? <laughs> yes, ex exactly. We're this is the second left. One more left, and we're good. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure that. Um, if you guys are going to uh, take the box off the kid's head, I'm going to stand in between the kid and the body so that hopefully the kid does not see or notice the corpse splayed out on the floor. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to take the box off of his head because, I mean, well, maybe he won't see the corpse if the okay. box isn't there, you know? The corpse is quite large. Uh, like, picture bull elephant sized. I'm going to say, can someone else grab the kid, though? Because I'm not, I'm not that strong, so if he struggles, then... The corpse looks like a dog, except if the person making it had never seen a dog and used a bull elephant for its base. It's ten feet tall and eight thousand pounds, has tusks and a strange upward curling tail, and it smells awful of rot and decay. Oh, so there's no hiding that with my own body. No. Maybe if you're really close. <laughs> how, how large is uh, the bed? Because I'm, I'm just pa picturing big, like, practically room, uh, practically dorm room-sized bed. It's a queen or a king, maybe. Ooh. Okay, fancy. so one blanket won't be enough. <laughs> do we grab the kid, or do we tell Barry about this? Why do we do both? Why don't we um, grab the kid, go back, and then bring the kid to Barry and tell him? Splendid idea. All right, but... 
I'm I'm not gonna do do the kid grabbing. Someone else can do that. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm happy to help, but I I can't do this solo. I'm just gonna. Can I just tap the kid on the shoulder? Oh, you're asking me. Do you tap the kid on the shoulder? Uh, yes, I would like to. I would like to just tap the kid on the shoulder. Okay, he removes his helmet box and looks at you, surprised that you are there. Hi. We know some people that are looking for you. Oh my goodness. Hi. Yeah. Um, so? Yeah, if you just want to step through the very intimidating portal, we can take you to that person. A trusted adult. Oh, no, thank you. I'm a chosen one. I'm going to become an Ekenblim. Oh, this... Oh, you're, you're going to become an Ekenblim? <gasps> uh, yeah, like, um, who... Who told you? Um, that, that's exciting. Good for you. I've always wanted to be one of the chosen ones. So, like, uh, who, do you know who's doing the choosing? All of you make a perception check. Oh, boy. Oh, well, there that we go. Yep. Okay. Fifteen. Six. Eleven. It's pretty obvious. I'm going to say even Cosmos can see. <laughs> this kid has pointed ears and seafoam green flecks in his brown eyes. And he responds to Stella by saying, Of course, the Ekenblum told me themselves. I'm one of the chosen ones. Hmm. Uh, do, do you know which Ekenblum? Like, how do I sign up for this choosing service? <laughs> you have to be chosen. Oh, okay. The Ekenblum said, I am worthy to become one of them. I deserve this. I'm special. And you didn't get any names or anything like that? Why would I tell you? Uh... Well, because um, she, she's she's gonna she's gonna try to think of something. Oh, right, because like I, I want to just uh, go and and tell them how much I appreciate what they're doing by by choosing people and and getting them to join their ranks. You know, do they know you're here? Hmm. Um, I, I am going to uh subtle. I'm gonna spend a one source free point to subtle cast suggestion, and I'm going to say so like. Using suggestion, I'm going to say, um, yeah, why don't you just tell me who, who brought you here? Because then I can go and, and thank them myself, maybe give them a nice little gift. Just the, the tell me who brought you here is the suggestion part, and they have to make a wisdom saving throw. Eight. That is a fail. Blitz Quispy. <gasps> he clasps a hand to his mouth. Blitz Quispy. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. How? How did you make me say that? Well, I mean... I just asked you, and you wanted to say it, so... Uh, yeah, I that's... did not! Help! Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Wait, is he, is he shouting help? Yeah. Nothing happened. <laughs> I I'm gonna look around and see if there's any, like, food or anything like this. Yes. You find a table with a wide array of food. A feast. Uh, Trevor. Quick pair of questions. One, what's with, uh... Fluffy McTrunk face here. What? You you don't you don't see the giant, unfortunately passed, whatever that is. Are we going to address the elephant in the room? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That thing. That was just one of the servants. They're not important. Uh, that's a servant. Yeah, they don't matter. Only the chosen matter. Everybody else is just. Eh. Oh god, Sinclair the player just wants to smack this kid. <laughs> Cosmos uh, the player what? is concerned and frightened. <laughs> yeah, and Stella's player is just like, uh, I, I don't know what to do. Like, sh should we take this kid back with us? Should we leave um, them here? Should we ask them if they want to come back? They don't seem to want to come back. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, so... Oh. Go ahead. Well, why don't we just like take a take a sidebar and kind of discuss this? You know, go somewhere, somewhere. You know, and then she's just gonna gesture back to the circle. All right, I'll go ahead and step back into the circle. Oh, Trevor, the second question before I leave: How did you end up here? Because cause the last your parents heard from you, you you were taking a trip to the loo, and then they seemed to have couldn't they weren't able to find you. What happened? And that is what Stella did force out of him, that the person who brought him here was named Blitz Quispy. So oh, yeah, okay. you guys did get that. So he says, the Ekenblim brought me here because 
I deserve to be here. I'm going to become an egg emblem. Okay. And uh, heads up for the players, Blitz Quispy is a devil who's working with the egg emblem. And that is can be more examined in the episodes Petrification in Red and Due to the Poodoo at the Zuzu and Petting Zoos and Finding Clues and, he's, you know, yeah. Been lo- in lots oh, of episodes. Oh, Blitz. Yeah, <laughs> looks like a red-headed dwarf until he doesn't. I've only met Blitz. Well, yeah, I have actually. Yeah, <laughs> Petrification in Red and Petting Zoos and Finding Clues. I just checked. Yeah. I mean, I- I'm going to wait for Sinclair to step into the circle with me before I have the sidebar. All right. We'll probably be back soon, Trevor. Don't bother. <laughs> so I'll just gonna like giggle a little bit I... and, and then walk out <laughs> into the portal. I may chant a slight slap. <laughs> oh, did you hit Trevor? As I was leaving. Uh. Okay. All right. I guess you step into the portal. Yeah, yeah, a, a, a parting backhand, as it were, with mm-hmm. the spectral hand. Oh, okay. no, what have I done? <laughs> oh, no. That's all right. So you guys are in, because you did it right before you stepped in, so you guys are in the portal. You probably don't know Sinclair did that. <laughs> yep, no, I, I wouldn't know. So I just said, so what do we do with this kid? Like, he, he wants to stay here, but I don't think his parents want him to stay here? Like, what do we do in a situation like this? We just leave him here? Do we tell someone? Do we take him with us forcefully? Do we try to convince him to go with us? Because I think I can do that. Like, you saw how he he said the name of someone and he said that he didn't want to. I can try that again. I mean, he's ten. What's he going to do to stop us? You're right. It's just... Yeah, I'm not that strong, so... <laughs> Like, not, not, when I say this, please don't think that I'm endorsing, you know, the beating of children, but, I mean, Cosmo, come on, man, couldn't, couldn't you put him in a headlock or something, or, you know, a sleeper hold, something to make I, him a little less squirmy? I'm still trying to figure out what happened to the beast corpse in the middle. Do you think the kid did that? Uh, that, that that's idea. a servant, not a beast corpse, remember? Right, right, right. Servants don't matter. We're not servants. We matter. He wouldn't do that to us. Yeah, he, he treats his servants a lot worse than, um, a lot worse than, like, I treat mine. I'll just tell you that. What a brat. <laughs> I slapped him. Oh, you, you what? did? Well, no, no, no. I did, I, he, with a mage hand. He would, he, no way he could know it was me. He had it coming. Well, I mean, as I said, we, we could try to get him to go with us, uh, sort of willingly. Um... Yeah, I could use my thing. Oh, your little hand wavy, tell me who took me, and now hand wavy, hey, come with us, we have candy. Yeah, except without the hand wavy, because I don't need to do that. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> so yeah, do you think we should try that and then try to take him by force, or do you think we should, like, uh, just leave him? I, I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Uh... I feel like letting Barry know wouldn't be a bad idea in this situation. Well, getting a getting a third party in on the matter. Yeah. That kid was human, right? When he was a month a month ago, good old fashioned human, right? Yeah, that's that's what I remember no point- from the description and from like the no- people that look like us past. No pointy ears or anything like that. No strange eyes. Or was I the only one seeing that? Oh no, I saw those too, but I don't think he had those before that beforehand. So That's I what I'm know. saying. I'm, I'm I'm saying if we leave him, I don't think he. I think he's there permanently. Like whatever's going on is already started. Maybe it can be reversed. Maybe it can't. But if it can, I'm sure there's a shelf life to how long you have for a window to reverse it. If he's got, if he's got, do you think he's got the dust, the Echelhui, in? <gasps> do you think that's what's making him act this way? I mean, we, we could try to get the dust out of him. Uh, do, do you still have that rod, Sinclair? I mean, yeah, I'm always packing a rod. <laughs> oh, goodness. Mission accomplished. <laughs> oh, boy. Got Breaking Stella with that one. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm always packing, um, but... <laughs> Stella he's not- laughs. But, uh, Trevor's not undead. I... What would the dust have to do with him? He's not zombied. 
I mean, like, remember how, like, I'm not undead and you took a lot of the dust out of me and I got memories back. Like, maybe it will give him memories back, too. Maybe he's forgotten his parents? Yeah, maybe when he remembers them, he'll want to go back. Or, like, we we could just uh, take him back with us and then get the dust out of him. And then, like, see what happens? The thing is, like, if we we take him by force, then aren't we kidnapping him, too? Like, wouldn't that... Like, I don't, kids don't really like to be taken places when they don't want to, you know? Yeah, that does I just make me feel cool about a little it. bit weird. I mean, is it kidnapping if you're kidnapping a kidnapped child to return him to his home? I think I like the idea of using, seeing if we can get the Echoblim out of this kid and seeing what that does, if there is, in fact, any. All right. Yeah. Though, I, I don't know, maybe we should get him somewhere else, because that... that elephant thing in the in the room that kind of creeps me out so maybe we shouldn't be near it when we do that because who knows how so, we react two thoughts um he seems to like you better than me stella okay uh, so here's here's the rod um and maybe decontaminate the servant just in case first not a bad idea either because i can i can cast silence like if you can restrain him uh Cosmo, I can cast silence around him and you, so he can't call for help, while Stella does the whole decontamination. Yeah, like, that's the thing. I'm thinking that it's best to take him away from that environment and then do the decontamination, you know? Because what if there's just, like, the dust everywhere else? That's what I'm saying. Well, here. Like, try and decontaminate me. Oh, yeah. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try to decontaminate Sinclair. To see if any of the dust somehow got in him. Okay, you get some dust out. Oh, so oh. there is dust here. Dang, that's itchy. <laughs> yeah, you see, it feels really weird. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think we yeah. should take him somewhere else, because then he might just get contaminated again if we just stay there, you know? So, how about this? How about we um, take him back to uh, to Barry with us, and then go from there? So, what, what's the game plan? Run in, snatch him, grab him, run back. And then think of Barry? Yeah. Do we like, need to make I, him I'm think gonna, of Barry? I'm going to try, try to just get him to follow um, to follow us. And then, uh, and, and then like, if that doesn't work, then grab him. And then uh, we go to Barry. Uh, that's, what my, that's what I'm thinking. Sounds like a plan. All right, let's do it. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think of uh, Trevor again, and then I'm going to step back into the room. Trevor, Trevor, <laughs> Trevor. I also follow... I have a bad feeling about this. All three of you emerge into the room. Stepping out of the portal, you emerge into an incredibly classy large room. The kid is no longer sitting in the gaming chair. He's over by a shelf doing something. Uh, I am going to, once again, use another sorcery point to subtle cast suggestion, casting at third level since I'm out of second level slots. Uh, and I'm going to say, hey, Trevor, uh... Come with us. Come, come through this. Uh, come through this thing, this uh, portal. And yeah. ironically, zombie-like, he turns around and steps towards the portal. Okay. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm the person zombifying thing is the party. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm concentrating on uh, the the spell. So, um, like he's he's gonna essentially like do that as as long as I say. So I'm just telling him to like yeah follow us and step toward the portal. Okay. Can I get a description of what Sinclair and Cosmos are up to? Um, um, <laughs> I'm going to wait by the portal for everyone else to get through first. And I'm just on standby to cast silence if the kid tries to raise the alarm, so to speak. All of you perception check? 16? 13. 2. <laughs> Sinclair does not, but all of the rest of you notice that that dog is not there anymore. Oh. And the plot twist for this episode is not too dead to ruin your day. Because I'm going to roll a dice on a 1 and 2, Stella, 3 and 4, Sinclair, 5 and uh... 6, Cosmos. Cosmos. Yay! From, <laughs> <laughs> from behind you, uh, you hear a growl. A low death rattle like moan or growl as the applefinch which is what it's called when the echoblim dust 
revitalizes a corpse, attacks you. Oh, joy. It's right by the portal. And so are you. And it rolls four attacks. Oh! 23 to hit. Oh, that's going to hit. With a bite. Another 23 to hit with tusks. Yep. Non-natural 20 to hit with a claw. Yeah. And a 26 to hit with a sting. Oh, all of those hit. For 12 piercing damage from the bite, 12 piercing damage from the tusks, 12 slashing damage from the claw, and 11 piercing damage, and please make a constitution saving throw from the sting. Doesn't matter, because I'm unconscious. Okay. Thankfully, right, it, um, I was still conscious up until the sting, but the sting got me. <laughs> yeah, take an additional 22 poison damage if your constitution save is... Go ahead and roll one. That's uh, constitution. That's 11. Yeah, yeah. 22. Uh, would damage. we call that a failed so, death save? Nope. I'd put okay. you at that number below zero because it was one attack. It dealt uh, poison and piercing damage to you. Do we? Sinclair, yeah. you didn't notice much, but you did notice that. So how much damage did I, I, I take in total? Ask, did, did I even notice that? Uh, 12 times... No, just on the last hit. 1 plus 22. Oh, on the last one was 22. 22. Okay. Uh, 11 piercing from the sting and 22 poison from the sting. So a total of 33. That nearly killed me outright. Thankfully, I'm still just unconscious. Y'all notice as Cosmos gets attacked from a uh well it kind of looks like a dog if the person making it had never seen a dog and had used a bull elephant for its base it's 10 feet tall and 8,000 pounds has tusks and a strange upwards curling tail and we're in initiative i'm gonna have the next person be stella and then sinclair uh so and cosmos is laying next to the circle oh boy i mean he's right next to the circle so we just grab him and go but then Okay, so how... So Trevor is moving toward the circle. He's going to step in the circle, right? Cause... Yeah. Yeah, Trevor is probably like two turns away from the circle. Two turns away from the circle. Okay. Uh, Yeah, let's um, first of all get... I'm going to have to be right next to him, though, for the spell to take hold, because I think... I don't know if it transfers between planes, you know? Uh, I, I'm going to say to St. Clair... Um, I, I think you should you should grab Cosmos and get in the portal because that was not great. And oh boy, still concentrating on the spell, I am going to grab Trevor and I'm going to run toward the circle. Noted. You will reach the circle um, on your next turn. Let's see. Okay, Sinclair, it's your turn. So you're you're grabbing Cosmo? No, I, I'm grabbing Trevor. I told I told you to grab Cosmos. Okay. All right. Come on, Cosmo. Don't die. Don't die. Come on, bud. Uh, I'm assuming the creature is right on top of him, practically? Practically on top of him. Cool. I am going to use a uh, new spell I just learned called Thunderstep. I teleport myself to an unoccupied space I can see within range, 90 feet. Immediately after I disappear, a thunderous boom sounds, and each creature within 10 feet of the space I left must make a constitution saving throw, taking 3d10 thunder damage on a failed save. Uh, I can also bring along one willing creature, Cosmo. Moan once in pain if you're willing. <laughs> that sounds like consent to me. Let's go, bud. <laughs> Crack a boom. Boom. How much damage do you do to the air quotes dog? The elephant dog can make a constitution saving throw. DC is 15. It passes. It got a 19. Well, that's only 11 damage. But we're 90 okay. feet away. Yeah, it's down to 178 hit points. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> but you are where? Did you teleport into the circle? Um, teleporting that we're still within 90 feet of the circle, but far away from it. Oh, okay. You are 90 feet from it, let's say? Yeah. Okay, noted. Is that the end of your turn, Sinclair? Uh, yes. Yes, that was my movement and my action. Cosmos, please make a death saving throw. Yep, here it comes. Uh, 15, so that's a pass. One pass, you're fine. Stella, it's your turn. Uh, hmm. So if, if I were to throw a potion of healing at someone, is that an action or an item interaction? That's an action. Hmm, how far am I away from the circle? 
One movement. Like, one turn's movement if you, like, dashed carrying the kid. Like, if you spent your entire turn running, you would get to it. Oh, so it's it's an action, then. <gasps> mm. Oh, I know. I'll use my last remaining third level spell slot to... Uh, yeah, I'm going to Misty Step there, and then I'm going to run the rest of my movement to toward... Uh, the circle, hopefully getting to the circle at the time, is the is the creature waiting and ready to attack me? Yes. And you have Trevor, you're approaching the circle, you can get there this turn, and the creature is waiting and ready to attack you. Yes. Okay. Um, I- I'm going to use my... Um, use my action to throw my potion of healing to... Well, you'll, to you'll only get Christmas. halfway if you use your action. So it's a dash to get there. So the dash is your action plus your movement. So you can go oh, no. halfway. Like, uh, my, my, my Misty throw. step takes me uh, 30, 30, um, to a place I can see within 30 feet. So if it's 60 feet away, then oh. I can just use my movement to, like, uh, I don't have to spend my movement in action. I could just Misty step there half the way and then use the rest of my movement for the other half. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to use my action to throw my <laughs> potion of healing Either where Sinclair can catch it or where it will hit Cosmos and um, <laughs> he will get the benefit of it, hopefully. <laughs> so I'm going to say, yeet, Sinclair, try to catch it <laughs> or hopefully just get it to Cosmos. <laughs> and I'm going to step into the portal. So you're, you're, doing the, you're trying to throw it 90 feet. I am trying to throw it 90 feet. <laughs> okay. Uh, make a... What uses dexterity... Make a skill that uses dexterity check. Like sleight of hand, maybe? Uses dexterity? Okay, yeah. Um, So that would represent your ranged It could just be a straight dex check, since it's... Well, if you're trained, you can take the proficiency bonus. Oh, I don't like the head and the hands. Five! I rolled a five! Okay, that's about 20% of the way, so it makes it like, like 15 feet, 17 feet. Oh boy. Okay, well, (laughs) you got a potion of healing within... (sighs) 80 feet of you. <laughs> yeah, it's 18 and... feet from you. Yeah. Oh boy, I, th- I think I've already stepped into the circle at this point. Because essentially I was doing that as I stepped into the circle. <laughs> yeah. And the way that attacks of opportunity work is that it's as you leave the melee range of a creature. Mm-hmm. So as you leave, you actually teleport out. Okay. And it doesn't get an attack of opportunity on you. Whew. <sighs> okay, good. You are inside a black space. <sighs> oh boy. I'm scared. And so is Trevor in your arms. Um, because of the suggestion that... Does Misty Step stop your concentration? Probably not. No, it doesn't. So how long does that suggestion last? Like one turn-ish? Uh, no, no. It lasts, I think... I think if I cast at third level, it lasts longer than second level. Uh, let me just double check here. Um, suggestion. So if I cast it at third level, I believe it is 24 hours. Yep, 24 hours. Holy cow, yeah, yep. kid is not struggling. <laughs> so, yeah, I just, I don't know what's happening, but I'm just hoping for the best at this point. You guys have a potion of healing. Is that the end of your turn? It is the end of my turn. Okay. The dog is going to charge at Sinclair and the unconscious Cosmos, who is holding his head in his hands, looking through his fingers, and it makes it. What? A distance, I'm looking at its stats, of 80 feet, oh, stopping oof. 10 feet from you, and is able to use its sting attack on Sinclair, which has a 10 feet reach. 10 feet reach. Yeah. And it rolls a terrible, terrible low roll of a 16 to hit you. Does that hit? Yes! Oh, good. Okay. Take 11 <laughs> piercing damage, and please make a constitution saving throw. Oh, no! Just updating my hit points. <laughs> yeah, how many do you have? Not enough. <laughs> Not enough. And that was the end of the party. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, it might Nine. be. Okay, you take. I'm gonna roll for this. No. You take eight poison damage. <gasps> Whew. Okay. That's that's more manageable. After the roll that uh. Cosmo suffered. I was very, very worried. It's ten feet from you, and it's rotting, drooling and rotting at you. It emits a low moan, like a death rattle. 
All and right. it's your turn. Well, well, I hate to tell you this, but your stench is even worse than your bite. Or sting, in this case. And if I don't see you again, it'll be way too soon. Sayonara. And that'll be another thunderous step directly towards the portal. Dragging, uh... Moan once if you're also in pain. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Crack a boom. Here we go. Do you thunderous step right into the portal? Yeah. Okay. Stella, the blackness now has a Sinclair holding a cosmos. <sighs> I immediately cast Spare the Dying. Okay. It, well, it's a cantrip I get from uh, my warlock uh, patron. We're still in turns, guys. Oh. As, uh, yeah. And you would say that a turn has passed, and then uh, Stella wrote to you. What do you do? Oh, th- oh thank I'm God. sorry. You can make a death saving throw, Cosmos. Let's not well, I believe sp- deprive you of that. Spare the dying means that I'm stabilized? Yeah. Once they have a chance to cast it, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, gotcha. So that's going to be... That's a 14, so that's another pass. Okay, Stella, your turn. Okay, so basically I'm just going to say, oh, thank God you guys were all right. I, I got worried there for a second. Um, so let's just let's just go back, all of us, to, to Barry and hope that this thing doesn't follow us or if it does that there's more people there to deal with it and yeah i'm, I'm gonna think about very and go back and hope that my other friends will come as well <laughs> absolutely you emerge in the on the wooden floor of barry's house in I- the workshop where the conjuration circles are often drawn on this clean part of the floor and then sinclair what do you do Spare the dying. Okay. And, uh, I will think of Barry's place and taking a nice, long, hot rest after this and drag, uh, Cosimo through the portal with me. Okay. You all emerge in Barry's workshop. Barry goes, you're back. Welcome back. Oh, Trevor. Oh, thank goodness. And then... Behind you, a massive elephant-sized dog's head emerges from the portal. It's facing the wrong direction. Stella, it's your turn. It gnashes its teeth. It's just the head, but now the shoulders are starting to emerge. What do you do? Can I close the portal while while it's in there? What action do you take? Uh, I am, yeah, I'm going to use my action to try to, like, just break the portal. Um, actually, wait. <gasps> I just had a better idea. I'm going to use my third level spell slot to cast Rhyme's Binding Ice once again. Or, well, Binding Ice, I mean. I'm going to use my third level spell slot to cast Binding Ice. And, um... Yeah, you know what? I have one more sorcery point left. I'm going to use that to quicken it, so it's a bonus action. The creature needs to make a con save. DC 15. Yeah, that's in the 20s. Ooh, yeah. It, it succeeds, so it's not caught by it uh binding ice it turns its head and looks at you and you can see one eye is disappearing into the portal and one eye is looking at you now it has a new direction to to look at yeah like you cast that spell um i also like by casting that spell i want to just like shatter the circle just use use the ice to just like just like make it like all dissipate everywhere As the dust is flung across the room, the dog's head gets cut in half and clunks to the floor, rotting in this room now. (sighs) Just gonna lean against the wall, because that was exhausted. Because that was exhausting. (laughs) Oh, you're you're exhausted. (sighs) I... I, Uh, uh, I'm feeling not so... Great. Does poison supposed to make you feel feverish? Oh. Oof, yeah, you, you don't look good. Uh, Barry, do, do you have anything for poison or like any healing potions or anything? Or do you know anyone who can heal? Because these guys look a bit worse for the wear. And as you guys get patched up by Barry the Artificer and Cosmos comes back to life. Hi, Cosmos. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank heavens you're alive. Do you have anything to say? Before we end this adventure? Yes, actually. 
Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to turn to Barry and say, so, like, Trevor actually really didn't want to go from where he, he was, so he's under a spell right now. It only lasts for 24 hours, that's why he's so quiet. He's probably going to start kicking and screaming once the spell wears off. And, like, I'll explain the rest of the situation to him later, probably. But yeah, that's what I wanted to say before the session ends. I'll call his father right away, and he'll be here, as I'm sure, as soon as he can. Oh, he's going to be so glad to have his son back. Okay. Good job, yeah, team. <laughs> yes, we only almost died. Oh. Anyone have anything they want to say before the end? Be sure to spay and neuter your <laughs> elephant dogs. Otherwise, this crap happens. <laughs> yeah, and, and try to stay away from glitter dust, usually. Like, any, like dust is just sketchy in and of itself. <laughs> All right, and Cosmos? Unless it's used for costuming, that stuff's okay. Okay. Joining us on this adventure were... Sinclair! Uh, poison. Stella! Oh boy, so much has happened tonight. And Cosmos. I lived. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Wait for it. Be happy, happy, happy. Do you ever struggle with being happy? Well, if you do, you're not alone. It seems like everywhere we look these days, someone is talking about or trying to sell a product through happy. The question is, if happy is all around us, why do so many people struggle finding it? Could it be we're going about it all wrong? You're doing it wrong. Could happy be more than just decreasing the negative and increasing the positive in our lives? That's what we believe at Happy Life Studios. We define a happy life as a lifestyle where you get and keep your happy despite the circumstances around you. We're here to navigate, activate, and advocate your happy. We want to help you find it, turn it on, and then walk alongside you in the process. So search Happy Life Studios from wherever you listen to podcasts, and let's get happy together. <laughs> hey, are you happy? Would you like to do a promotion swap with Fire Breathing Kittens? Send us an email at firebreathingkittenspodcast at gmail.com. We will put your 30-second advertisement for your podcast at the end of one of our episodes if you will do the same for us. You can send your promotion in the format of a 30-second mp3 that we will play, or as a text that we can read. Here's a promotion for the podcast called Side Talk. Check out the Side Talk podcast, where we serve up real talk with real people about everyday topics. On Side Talk, no topic is off limits. Listen to Side Talk podcast and learn about things that you never thought about. Side Talk is available on all platforms where podcasts can be found. Subscribe today. So yeah, if you'd like to do a promotion swap with us, send us an email at firebreathingkittenspodcast at gmail.com. We'll do a 30-second promo swap with you if you do the same for us. All right. Bye. Have you ever been so embarrassed that you just want to crawl into a hole? Well, you're not the only one. Oh No With Me, Anna Campion, is the podcast all about embarrassing stories. I talk to people with all kinds of tales that end the same way. A tomato red face and a heaping pile of embarrassment. New episodes of Oh No With Anna Campion are out every Thursday. You can listen wherever you get your podcasts.